whatever you just did uh, made it worse. So uh, there you go. But uh, I didn't want to make people wait any longer. So while you play with your video, I am going to talk to my beloved audience. Um, one thing I wanted to say that has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with this stream is, uh, you know, yesterday I was just, uh, you know, I just sometimes I just turn on YouTube TV, you know, and just kind of like, you can't really call it flipping through the channels anymore, but you know, like same difference. Right. And, um, Yeah, I'm listening. Sorry, I'm I was just reading the comment. I'll, I'll answer the comment thing in a sec. In a second. So anyway, uh, Ghostbusters was on like AMC or something, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, which is like a, a basic cable movie channel, basically that has lots and lots of commercials. But so anyway, I was watching it and I was like, wait a minute, I think I have Ghostbusters on Blu-ray, you know, and so I, and sure enough, I did, and so I, I threw it on and I watched you know, watch Ghostbusters, which, you know, I've seen Ghostbusters like a million times, but, you know, I haven't yeah, seen it. I haven't seen it in a really long time, you know, and it's just like, it's one of those iconic movies uh, of the 80s, but. Yeah, maybe the iconic movie. Well, I mean, yeah. it's right up there, like in the top 10 for sure. Yeah, but like just watching the movie is just like, people just think, oh yeah, it's one of these, you know, classic 80s movies or whatever. And like, it is, but it's also like, Harold, I forgot who it was. Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis that wrote it together. You know, like mm -hmm. those guys were just like geniuses. Like if you watch yeah. that movie, if you try to watch that movie with the eyes of someone who hasn't seen it before, it's like, how did they even come up with half of that stuff? Like that that took like a serious, seriously creative mind. You know, like yeah, the, and, and the Stay I mean, Puft Marshmallow them, Man. Yeah, like that's the big boss battle at the end of the movie is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Like who thinks of that? You know. Uh, probably people on drugs. Oh, well, that, that's <laughs> Enjoying true. Enjoying some recreational drugs, probably. That's definitely yeah. true. Um, <laughs> so I, I can't, if I bring it back up on the screen, it's going to cut out uh, our audio. But um, Henry was asking about, yeah, on the TV stand on my channel artwork, there I believe that there's a, a Senna um, sticker. Because when, uh, when I had Steve Nazar draw that, I asked him to put a little Senna tribute in there for me. So... Uh, so there you go. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we sound okay. I tried to, you know, get everything all dialed in. Um, I, I'll tighten up the shot after we get this thing open and everything. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, Corey, do you want to make, first of all, what are you eating? I'm eating some, uh, Welch's mixed fruit, fruit snacks. Well, that's a really, I mean, that's the thing with, with having little kids in the house. Sure. You know, you, there's a like a basically an unlimited supply of these things. Yeah, but like, I think I've it's got, also I've got fruit uh, snacks coming out of every orifice. At I'm this point. I'm jealous, but I I want to just point out that that's probably the perfect snack to be eating, like when we're doing something like this because it's completely silent. You know, like corn nuts yeah. would be the worst thing you could be eating right now, <laughs> and probably uh, fruit snacks would be like the best. Yeah, I mean they're 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 pretty good. Yeah, uh, my my kids have a serious addiction to these things. So. Yeah, you know I have if a I, uh, really quick. I have a coworker who she has she has a little daughter, but she says, and I'll ask your opinion since I guess you're a parent too. She says that those are not junk food because they're made so they're, with fruit juice. Like that's not candy. Yeah, that's yeah. like a healthy snack. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're actually a lot more better for you than you'd expect them to be. I mean, yeah. it says here it's a excellent source of vitamin A, C, and E, no preservatives, and gluten-free, and made with real fruit. Wow. I mean, one of these bags, this is like 70 calories for this entire bag. That's not bad. No. All right. Anyway, nobody wants to hear us talk about fruit snacks. So um, I already told you offline, my, um, my, my pessimistic prediction is a uh, game informer from like 2006. So do you want to uh, – somebody in the chat already said that they, they think it's going to be a diehard game fan, which I would love that, but I can – just judging by the thickness, I can almost guarantee I, that's not what's in here. It, it doesn't feel like it could be a game pro. I feel like it's going to be a game pro. I wouldn't mind if it was game pro. It just – it feels like a pretty game thin pro magazine. Nineteen. Uh, it's going to be a game pro from 19 
Thank, uh, you said you said surprise me, right? Yeah, oh yeah, For, it, it can uh, be it could be anything. I think it's gonna be a Game Pro from 1998. Okay. Uh, yeah. Did you did you see it in our stream? Like, so try signed up for this like after he saw our, us oh no i didn't our, know that. doing our read-throughs and stuff and so yeah. he signed up and he got his and he got a an issue for, of the official playstation magazine from oh, that's kind of cool from 19, it had final fantasy 8 on the cover so it was 1999 or yeah that'd be kind of cool i'd be yeah. down with that yeah so maybe maybe it's something like that that yet you, have, you haven't even thought of yet maybe it's an official dreamcast magazine that would be cool, although I already have all those, but um, that would still be cool. Um, I mean, this is not about me getting something I already have or not. It's about hopefully getting something that makes for a good live stream. So, um, all right. So I have the stream set to ultra low latency. So hopefully okay. it won't take long before you see it. So. Here we go. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. All right. You're gonna, you're gonna wish that you were doing this on the main channel, probably. Okay. It's, oh, I doubt. Start, Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to figure out which side is up, but I think that I think it is up. So. Yeah, it's 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 looking right. Okay. Uh, a little bit slower. Nah, I don't. This isn't ah. a script tease. Is that which way is right well, side up? Oh, this way. Okay. All right. Is it good? Should I look? What is it? Uh, I, I don't mean, think I think it's not good. Your reaction right now is bad. This is like I mean, it's, this is it's like your wife got a, a haircut and she tried something different and you're trying to be like diplomatic about it. Here I'll Yeah, I wanna say it's like two thousand two ish or so. I'm oh my them. god. <laughs> well, I don't I don't know. I don't did I did I do something to Frank? I don't really know. Oh, I forgot to turn off one of these lights. Hold on. Is that too, maybe that's going to be too dark now? Looks good to me. All right. I can always adjust the camera setting. It was just, um, or I, ha I have my little lights down here. I can use one of those. Um, yeah, it could def. as Eric18 says, this could definitely be worse. That's true. You know. Although, you know, I, I did not play Jack 2. Me either. Because I didn't like the direction that they went with it. Really? I, like, I really like first jack um all right but so you still want to do this magazine yeah let's do let's do this magazine i mean let's let's see what we got i mean this is like early ps2 era i mean wait what's the year on it i don't even know um it says issue 178 does it say down here oh january 2006 or is that when this is that when this when this guy's subscription ended if he, yeah, that can't be 2006. Here, I mean, that would have been after is that the, better? uh, that'd be like the PS3 yeah, would be actually... almost out at that point. Maybe I mean, that's how that's long like, this guy's subscription went for here. Is that, that's, that's better, that's, I think. That's that hey, look what I found, but look what I finally found, by the way, the, the remote for my light. <laughs> it was a, it was upstairs for some reason. Um, all right. Well, anyway, let's open it and check it out. But yeah. okay. I uh, yeah, the... oh yeah, I said I was going to zoom in. I I wouldn't be. I you don't be disappointed with us. It's I mean, not here. Here's the thing: is if it wasn't, if I wasn't trying to do a show, I wouldn't be disappointed. But it's just the problem is, is it's going to be another is, uh, uh, instance of like. Hopefully there's stuff in here that I can like speak intelligently about. Like that's my, that's literally my only concern is like, you know, it would be like if I was reading a magazine on, on some topic I knew, you know, carburetors weekly or something. I'd be like, oh yeah, check out the, the, you know, intake manifold on top of that baby, you know? So, um, <laughs> well, look, it's got, it's got goblin commander in it. Yeah. I don't how, know. how can you go wrong with, with goblin commander? I don't know. Oh, there's hey, there's Castlevania: Aria of Sorrow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. I mean, this is, you know, it's yeah. It's 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 a good a good time. Yeah. I think. Yeah. All right. And it's, it's red. Time. And it's red hot PlayStation Two action. Red hot. Hopefully, there's none of that cringy 
you know, you remember the stuff from the last magazine with the, you know, the cring oh, yeah. the cringy stuff. I, hopefully, we can skip that this time. Well, Game Pro, I I think would not be putting cringy stuff in it. Let's hope so. Because because I mean, the Game Pro has always been more kid friendly. True. True. Um, and hopefully, you can keep an eye on the chat. I have the chat way over here. Oh, yeah. So, all right, I don't want to. You got uh, it. I don't want to miss anything. So, uh, on the inside cover, um, and so with the the latency is good. Seems like it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's okay. pretty good to me. Good, 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 good. Uh, so inside cover here is an ad for uh, Sonic Adventure DX. So this was yeah. like a redo of Sonic Adventure, right? And it came out uh, on the yeah. GameCube. And in a lot of ways, it's not nearly as good. Really, uh, it, it has it has some added stuff. It has a lot of Game Gear games that are unlockable in it, which are kind of cool. Uh, but the, the game itself has suffered some like like some downgrades in terms of in terms of graphics. Uh, like I think it was two years ago, uh, John Lenneman and myself did a live stream uh, where we compared this version with the with the Dreamcast version side by side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh he he pointed out a lot of stuff that I would never have noticed. Wow. Well, he that seems like a strength of his. You know, he's got very good yeah. att attention to detail. Uh, next. Are, are you? Do you like like Sonic Adventure though? I mean, uh, it's, it's okay. Not, yeah, it's not my. Right. You know, I I really really love the two D Sonic games. So like, you know, mm -hmm. I checked out Sonic Adventure when I got uh, Dreamcast, and it was just kind of like. Okay, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I feel I feel as though it, it peaks with the first level. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, well, uh, I don't know, man. Code. There were some cool. Although I don't know, I guess it's hard for me to separate like the gameplay from like there were just some levels in Sonic Adventure where they just looked so good that I'm just like yeah. running through the level, and the whole time you're just like looking at looking around the screen and just like wow, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I know it's like not it, it, in, uh, in like directly talking about the the GameCube version, which yeah. is here. But I mean, I remember the first time I saw Sonic Adventure on a Dreamcast, yeah, running uh, for the first time, and it was just something about that 480i signal that just made it look. It, it may as well have just been on an HD TV at the time. I just remember yeah. it looking so crisp. Yeah, that it seemed like such a huge jump compared to anything else before it. Yeah, it's a good looking game. It is. Yeah, good soundtrack too. Sorry. Yeah, um, soundtrack is probably the best part about the game. That was like one of my my favorite parts about that Dreamcast launch video I did was just having that uh uh what I had at the during the closing credits it was like the band playing that the um one of the songs from Sonic Adventure like playing it live you know and it was uh Sagata Sanshiro like that introduced it and everything like uh I don't know if you ever get like that when you're making one of your videos there's like some little thing that you put in your video that makes you like excited about the whole video even though like 100%. You know, I mean, how many 100%. people are still watching? Like, if I make a video that's an hour long, how many people are still watching it by the time the credits roll? You know, but for me, I was just like, right. that's like the coolest thing, you know? And sometimes, yeah, sometimes when like something in the edit just works out so perfectly, it can just yeah. it can make you like make the whole thing come together, give you that energy to get through making the rest of it. Yeah. Sure. I mean, that, that happens a lot. Oh, I guess these pages were stuck together. Uh, wow, this is really thin paper. <laughs> um, you know anything about what is this? Is this one of? Oh, okay, so this was a. Is this an online game? What is My Street? You know anything about My Street for the PlayStation? I don't, I don't 2? know anything about that. It says My Street is overrun with punks. That's crazy. My Street's overrun with punks. I have that problem. Yeah, um, I think it's just that the older you get, the more people in your eyes fall into the punk category. You know, like. Somebody that I yeah. would have thought was cool in my 20s is now like just some punk on my street, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you just want you just want them to shut up and leave you alone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it says tearing up backyards with RC race cars, dominating the beach with games of volleyball, and you've already seen what they do with dodgeballs, which is over here. Um, 
kind of creepy looking. Looks kind of like a um, either a red blood cell or like if it kind of has the shape of a Yorkshire pudding without the stuff, you know, spreading out. But yeah, um, yeah, th- I guess this is some kind of weird online thing that doesn't really look that interesting. So uh, next page. Uh, how about Midtown Madness Three for Xbox? Uh, I haven't played any of those. I got to be honest. I am familiar with uh, at least the second one. On uh, I was on the PC. I remember seeing it uh, like being played at somebody's house who had like a Voodoo Two or something like that. Yeah. But maybe it was a Voodoo One. Maybe it's an earlier 3D accelerator. But I can't. I, I don't know. That seems like a you know you can. It's like a free like free roaming driving game, I guess. Well, my first reaction to it was, oh, maybe it's like a crazy taxi ripoff. Oh. But I don't think so because, I mean, you're driving, you know, there's a Mini Cooper there, and I, that's a that's like a classic Mustang, so I don't. What was that game? It was like, a, a, oh, Midnight Club, right? It was like a launch game for the oh, PS2. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's something kind of like that. That was kind of a cool game. I think I had that game, maybe. Was that? It was that, like that wasn't a launch game on the PS2, was it? Or pretty, was that a? Wasn't there like a? What was the other one? That was a like a Rockstar launch game on the PS2. It was as. It, it was very much like Midnight Club, but it wasn't. It had it had like a dune buggy on the cover. Oh so oh, Smuggler's Smuggler's Run. Smuggler's That's Run, it. yeah. Um, but I mean, Midnight Club just seemed like it was like they just took the driving component of GTA 3. You know, like when GTA 3 came out and I played it, I was like, oh, this driving section is pretty much just like Midnight Club, you know? Yeah. 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 I, uh, GTA 3, you know, very, it's, I, I never finished a GTA game. I just get too carried away, just like blowing everything up. Yeah, I think the closest I ever came was San Andreas, which is, I, I love that game, yeah. but I never finished it just because, like, I never, it's one of those games where, for me at least, like, when you're playing it, you don't really feel any pressure to finish it because you're just having a good time doing whatever. Like, oh, I'm going to go deliver pizzas for a while, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I think I got to, there was, like, a remote control helicopter segment or something on that, and it was really difficult yeah. for me well, to pass that. We never said what, um... When this was from. Where's the freaking... Uh, oh, here you go. July there. July of 2003. Oh, wow. Yeah. July of 2000... I can't tell you anything about July of 2003. I was in college still. I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean... That was the year were... when you were just on like a year-long like opium bender, right? And that's why you can't... <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That's why I can't remember anything. Yeah. Um, um, I guess that was I, at the time. I guess I would have been. I would have been working. Uh, it was like right after I went through like a bad breakup, and yeah. I, I moved back with my mom for a little while. And bef- it was before I moved to New York, mm-hmm. and I think I was working, working at a game store, at the called uh, it was a, a game crazy. Oh yeah, that, I guess that wasn't was that sense. wasn't that was the the one that Hollywood Video owned, right? Yes, because it was yeah. inside inside of a Hollywood Video. So yeah. I worked there for a little while before I moved to moved to New York, and this is like true Hollywood with stories with with Corey. What's that? So this is like Corey's true Hollywood stories. <laughs> I, I that would make sense though, because I mean Jack Two is on the cover, and I remember working there when Jack Two came out. Oh, there you go. And I remember Game Crazy had had a lot of retro games when uh, yeah. indie games was not no longer carrying them. Yeah, maybe a little bit later than this, but I used to go to Game... We used to have a Game Crazy here in town, and I would go there and find, uh, you know, like, complete-in-the-box NES games and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Hollywood Video, man. I, yeah. I worked at Hollywood Video for a little while, too. That's, like, before that. Yeah. Before working at I never got to work at a at a video store, but that would have been cool. I I remember at the time Hollywood Video like the dress code was like I had to dress like an usher kind of with like a bow tie and stuff. It's so stupid. I'd probably quit if they said that. Like, yeah. oh, you have to. Well, I mean, 
I needed to do it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, all right, so is the masthead who, I mean, I don't know, is there anybody on the masthead that's like, uh, is I'm not as, you know, plugged into these people as you are, but. Uh, who is like the main, is, uh, Tom from, uh, when I'm doing, uh, Next Generation. Sorry, this is uh, so tiny. Uh, yeah, who's like the EIC at the time? Wes N- N I H E I. Yeah, I don't know. I don't recognize anybody on here. So anyway, uh, on the other side here, you got Delta Force Black Hawk Down. Know anything about? Uh, no. Sound, sounds no, riveting. The kind of games I would not have any interest in. Yeah. Uh, same here. It's the number one best-selling game in North America, though. I'm not. For one day, I'm not surprised. Uh, what's this? Might be cooler. Alter Echo. For uh, PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Huh. It looks... I, I've never played that. I know the name, though. I, the na- the cover... I The cover is like kind of green. It has a greenish-yellow. Yeah. I feel I, like I've... I recently watched this video of, of Tim Rogers, like, I'm not... Who is, like, going through, like, all these game... Co- like, talking about these game covers... Like yeah. from his memory and yeah. he's able to count, like recall like specific things yeah about them and uh i've been finding myself kind of doing a similar thing lately just kind of mm. just just because you know i feel like it i don't know if you had any like publishers that you had sort of a uh you were sort of biased against uh oh, either I, then or now but like for, for sure. me like this is a THQ game and i had like a thing where like to me, like, you know, uh, you know, like Bithead likes to say, like, so and so on the label means quality on the table. This is like yeah. the exact opposite, you know. Like, if I saw THQ, right. I was like, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, I mean, I would say things like, uh, I guess, I think I said it on the other stream that we did the uh, last week. Uh, U.S. Gold was definitely one of those for me. Nah, U.S. Gold's awesome. <laughs> did the Olymp- U.S. Gold made that horrible Strider too. But they made the Olympics games. Uh, wakeboarding Unleashed, featuring Sean Murray. It's like at the height of like there is, I guess this was basically like, every uh, ten dollars off at Best game. Buy. I don't. It's the kind every of thing I can see that like celebrity. Well, I don't know if Sean that. Murray's a celebrity like, or not, but uh, I don't know. I, I could wakeboarders. I could see this being fun though. I don't know. It could yeah, also. Oh, yeah. I think I said that last month about some, like, ATV game or something like that. But it's like, you know, in theory, wakeboarding, you know, I mean, because, like, I liked, uh, like, SSX was one of my favorite PS2 games. Yeah. And, like, functionally, how much different would wakeboarding really be, you know? Have, have you been wakeboarding before? No. Gosh, no. What about what about tubing? Yeah, like, like pulled behind a boat, you mean, tubing? Or floating down the yeah. river with a... <laughs> Yeah, I've been pulled behind a boat on a tube. I didn't I didn't super I, care for it. Like I feel like I'd rather just try like water skiing. Yeah. I but, had a friend when we were we were tubing one time and uh he was pulling he, and he flew off. He was flew off when we we were going like full speed. <laughs> he like hit the water in such a way that uh his swim shorts like exploded. Like they just Wow. Like completely ripped and like just like <laughs> exploded off of them. Wow. Uh-oh. It's yeah. my Something's going on with your video there, but your audio is fine. Up. Well, you're just yeah, like at oh, one frame every 5 seconds or something. Something happened with my with my uh It looks art. It looks artsy. Is it is it still bad? Oh yeah. But your audio is fine. I can yeah, go I back. I still it. have um where is it? I can just put the picture of you back. No, it's okay. I, I think I'm. <laughs> I think I may have fixed that. Okay, I don't know where that picture went anyway, but. Um... <laughs> but I've I've never been wakeboarding. I've never been. I think I only water skied one time. We only have. Oh yeah, I never. I've never done that. I've only done the tubing thing. But I don't. We've only got. We have like one lake around here, and um, you know that guy, the Zodiac Killer. 
um, I think it's like Ted Cruz's dad or something. I don't remember yeah, exactly, say, but man, uh, so the Zodiac killer uh, killed two people up at the lake near here, and they never caught him. So if you think I'm going to go hang out at that lake, I mean, obviously not. So I just didn't they just recently discover something? That, I don't know. Like they figured it out who it was. Maybe I don't know. Well, somebody I remember somebody said they figured out that it was Ted Cruz's father. So um, I don't. I don't know if that's true or not, but it sounds good. Anyway, uh, so that's just the table of contents over there. We don't care about that. And then, uh, uh, see, didn't we see a Got Milk ad in the last one? That what was we the did. magazine I did last time? I mean, it's, it was an EGM or something, but it had a. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe somebody with a car that looks like mine, like ran over Frank's dog or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, uh, with Hulk. That was like when the that's the uh, was that when the movie came out? Yeah, yeah. Mm. That was the um, what's his it. face that did it. I don't know. I um, did. I don't know. You not you and I are about. Well, you're a couple years younger than me, so I don't know. Did you ever get to right. watch when you were a kid uh, the Incredible Hulk TV show? I, I you know I saw the show, but probably on reruns. But at the time, there was also like these movies, like these made for TV movies yeah. every once in a while. I don't know. I used to try to watch. I used to try to watch the show sometimes. You know, that was that was Lou Ferrigno that played the Hulk. Uh, it's right. a bithead likes to talk about Lou Ferrigno because he likes bodybuilders. But um, that show used to scare me because I was like only four years old or something or five years old. And I'd watch that and I was like very scary. Uh, I've been trying ooh. to talk my son into watching uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. How old is he? He's six. I don't know, dude. I, mean, I saw Raiders when the, Lost Ark when, when the on, when the say. when the guy's face is like melting off. Like I don't. It, well, exactly. But the thing is, like, you, yeah. like nobody who ever saw that as a kid ever forgot about it. So you want to scar your kid just because you think it's like a not gonna, so much it'll, scar, but just to like, build character. Yeah, you know, you 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 will never forget the first time you see that the guy's face melt off at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh that's. That's true. Uh, uh, so th I think there was nothing good in the first half of the contents. I shouldn't say nothing good. I'm sorry. Nothing that I am excited about. But uh, on this page, uh, obviously, it's not the PC version, which is what I played. But uh, I, I got Return to Castle Wolfenstein for the PC when it came out. And I absolutely love that game. And Yeah, I've, uh, I have never played it. I don't even know how to put my <laughs> disappointment into words. But... Uh, you should check it out. I mean, you can get it on, like, I don't know if it's Steam or Good Old Games or whatever, but you can get it for, like, super cheap, and it's just it's you, pretty you cool. Really like, if you... What's that? Wait, you were you were disappointed by it? No, I was disappointed by what you just said, that you never played it. Uh. Um, it's just really good. Like, I don't know. I've tried, like, the new uh, the newer Wolfenstein uh, games for, like, you know, PS3 and... What is that? Xbox One? Was Xbox One yeah. the thing with the PS3? No, uh, that no. was Xbox 360. PS4. Xbox 360. All right, right. I don't PS4, know. You're talking about the like the, like uh, Wolfenstein, the New Order, and then there's yes the, uh, the yes. New Colossus. So I played I played some of the New Order, but it was like stressing me out too much, and I couldn't play it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I played it for a while. It, it was okay, but uh, I really feel like this one. Return to Castle Wolfenstein reminds me more of the original Wolfenstein 3D, you know, yeah. like I, I, just something about the atmosphere. It just it seems more like a wolf. And I, I just I really enjoyed it, and like I said, I bought it on either Steam or Good Old Games. I don't remember which, and to me, it still is fun to play uh, now. And uh, you see here, they actually have a PC Game Pro uh, section, uh -huh. so that's kind of neat. And they mentioned Tron 2.0. I remember I tried that game, but. I don't think I got that right. into it. And then apparently we're going to have 32 pages of Game Boy Advance coverage. So actually that I'm kind of excited about because I was into the Game Boy Advance. And then uh, six pages of sports games, which would make me excited, but probably not uh, anybody else. And uh, and then yeah. Role Players Realm. Are you, were you, you a big Coca-Cola fan? I saw yeah. Coca-Cola Coca -Cola yeah. Real on the other page. What's I mean, that? It's I, I have no idea. I've never seen that. It's like it's kind of like new Coke, kind of. 
Yeah, I don't remember. Like, I remember New Coke being a thing because I remember when that. I have, vaguely remember when that came out, but I don't remember anything about it. Like, that just seems like the weirdest thing to do, though, doesn't it? Like, that would be like if one day McDonald's was like, "Hey, we reformulated our French fries. Come check them out." Like, yeah, well, why would you do that? Burger like, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah but Burger, I don't feel I, like I don't, I don't feel like Burger King is like famous for their fries. No, no right, like. No. We go to McDonald's and we eat like a really bad hamburger because you need the extra bulk in your stomach because you can't just eat French fries for a meal. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. Yeah. I mean, when when they brought back regular Coke yeah. after that. Yeah. Is that when they then when they called is that when they started calling it Coca Cola Classic? That's my recol it, yes, that's my recollection is it was Coca Cola and then we had the new Coke and then when they said, Okay, we're going back to the old formula they started calling it Coca-Cola Classic. But it's just, okay. it seems like it was just like some young executive got into Coca-Cola and was like, I know how I'm going to make a name for myself. Like, I'm going to totally reformulate the most famous, most beloved soft drink on the face of planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I had a friend of mine, his parents like were from South Carolina, and they were like so in coca-cola they had like uh they had a coca-cola uh like like ma like a doormat that yeah. you walk in wow and th th i mean they had all these like all this memorabilia neon light maybe or something yeah i have uh i forgot if i ever told this story or whatever it's not even really a story but uh uh you know where i work the whole university campus was a Coke campus, meaning that like all the Maso the soda machines were Coke right. machines, like all of the on-campus stores sold Coke products, like et cetera, et cetera. And then at some point they switched over to Pepsi, right? So now we have all Pepsi machines and there's, you know, Pepsi everywhere and all that kind of stuff. But in the building where I work, the Coke people never came and got the Coke machine. So... Like, there's, like, this little alcove on the ground floor of my building where the vending machines go. And, like, literally the Pepsi dude, went like, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, maybe literally, yeah. like, by, by now, seven or eight years ago, like, showed up with the new Pepsi machine, pulled the Coke machine out of the alcove and just stuck it across the hall and then put the Pepsi machine in there. And that Coke machine has just been sitting there in the hallway for, like, seven or eight years. Because they kept you calling, should, be, what? You should like see if you can take it. Well, dude, this, I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So I ended oh. up. Um, I bought. I looked up the model number of the vending machine, and I bought the lock that that goes with that vending machine. And uh, I just need to drill out the old lock, and I'm going to put in the new lock. And then I already know a room upstairs where I'm not going to take it home, but I'm going to put it upstairs because like. Most people at work would prefer having Coke to Pepsi. And so I'm just going to like go to Costco and just buy a bunch of soda and just stock up the machine. And Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to yeah, keep the profits because that seems like. Better. Yeah. I just, I don't know what to do with, you know, it'll make a profit. I don't know. We'll just have to have like a, you know, pizza party or something. I mean, I feel like if I took the money and pocketed it, I could probably get in trouble. But if I don't, then I think I'm probably okay. But, um, you know, it's weird because. You know, growing up, it was always like a lot of Pepsi that we had because there's like a Pepsi plant in my in in my hometown, and so you just, you'd find Pepsi around a lot. And didn't didn't Pizza Hut always have pe Pepsi? I think that they always had Pepsi. Well, doesn't uh, Pepsi own Pizza Hut? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's how all those things work out. Yeah. But I don't. I, mean, I don't like Pizza now. Hut that I, much. I like like I haven't had regular Pepsi in so long. Yeah. Because the last time I, I had it, for, and that was the first time in a really long time, and it is so sweet that it, like, hurts your mouth. Oh, I mean, I only ever drink diet soda, so, I mean, I don't mind a diet. Yeah, oh, same, same here. I don't I, mind diet Pepsi, but I just, I mean, to me, Pepsi is, like, fine, but, like, Coke is just better. You know, neither one of them yeah. is, like, bad. Right. Uh, Ape Escape 2. What do you know about? Uh... I can't really talk too much on it, but... Uh, Did you but, play the first Ape uh, Escape? Some of it. I had a hard time getting into it, but Try I feel like the, really likes it. The first He's Ape Escape, it. I think, was one... Wasn't that, like, one of the first PlayStation games that 
absolutely required that you had an uh, uh, analog a controller with analog thumbsticks? Yeah, I mean, basically, it was the game that was released alongside of the of the Dual Shock. Yeah. All right. Uh, letters. I don't know anything in here. Uh, oh, I can I can relate with this first one. Solid snore. He says uh, this is Leonardo. Leonardo Silver Kia. I feel like his name's huh. Leonardo, and he just drives a silver Kia. Uh, he said, "I've <laughs> got to know why everyone loves Metal Gear Solid 2. Granted, the graphics are great and the gameplay is easy, but the storyline stinks a major one." It stinks a major. I feel like that's not what he actually wrote. I think that but, might be true, but. Uh, uh, if, I've never been I able mean, to get into the Metal Gear Solid games personally. So I, I I like them. Yeah, I like them a lot. Okay, but Metal Gear Solid Two is the last time that I really really paid attention and got hyped for a game up until release. Yeah, because you know it's it's famous for its you know the bait and switch essentially where uh you, you know all about that right what about how no i don't know anything with metal gear solid 2 like so all the the trailers uh you know show all kinds of cool stuff happening and then you only play as solid snake for the first like hour of the game then what happens and, and then then it switches to a character that is, was never in any trailers uh-huh. and they went like Kojima went as far as like swapping out character models for mm. like scenes in the game in the trailers so that like nobody knew that this was going to happen mm. like leading up to it and you know it looking back on it on it now like it's it's kind of amazing that they got that he got away with it because you know with I'll without any kind of leaks or anything like that. Yeah. But at the time, I remember, like, being so annoyed, thinking, like, I'm going to start playing a Solid Snake at any time. Any time is going to happen. And I, like, I, say, I played through the entire game in one sitting, like, throughout, like, all night. And I just remember being so let down. <laughs> uh, speaking of Ape Escape, uh, Josh, their creative assassin in the chat, said that uh, when he used to work at Toys R Us, he would tell people that it was pronounced Ape Escape. I can't remember what I I had something where I did that with people at work where I said, "Oh no, no, it's pronounced this way." And like people I work with are really gullible and so like they believe anything. I think it's my diction. They just believe anything I say. Yeah. And this has been going on for years and years. And then I'll say something completely outlandish and like, "Oh, really?" And I'm like, "No, not really." And I I even asked them like, "Why at this point do you believe anything that comes out of my mouth?" But it doesn't matter because I'm going to do something next week, and they're going to be like, "Really? No, yeah, not really." I mean, I, some people, some people are just very, very convincing like that. I think that's what it is. I should have been a lawyer. Uh, there's, there's still time. Well, that's true. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, someone's asking about the Wind Waker. Uh, I don't know. There's nothing really all that good over here, but uh, over here on the other side is Pirates of the Caribbean. You ever uh yeah. you ever check that one out? I mean, that's a, obviously a really cool uh movie. I don't know if it's a right, it's right. a Bethesda game. Kind of surprised to see that. I mean, this was like a year after the movie, the first movie had come out, I guess. I don't, and I don't know when the movie came out. So they were, they were really the timing was very good, I guess. Um makes me wonder if it was even if it was going to be titled something else, and then once the the movie did really well, they they bought the rights to it and just retitled it. But I I don't know. I I, I can tell you that the, the first parts of the Caribbean movie is is amazing, and it's it's only, very very fun to watch. Only the first part. Still. Yeah, I mean that's the only one I really cared for that much. Oh, the first movie. I thought you were saying like the first yeah, the, twenty minutes of the movie is good, and then after. No, that, no, no, no. The, the first entire movie. Like nobody's face is even time. getting melted off, and it's just like waste of time. <laughs> exactly. Oh, see, uh, Rooster Blood says I'm I'm correct. It was originally going to be Sea Dogs Three. Well, there you go. Or Sea Dog. Yeah. Oh, you know that was my nickname in high school. 
Sea Dog. Yeah. Because my, you know, uh, my name's Chris, you know. So like, What's up, Sea Dog? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, this is, I mean, I guess we're on the side channel, so it's a little bit less. <laughs> it's like I don't have to worry about being as, as family friendly over here. But I, I remember oh boy. Uh, the, my, my friend, the same friend who whose pants exploded from flying off the uh, – off of the inner t- the the inner tube or whatever the um i remember him uh there's a point in in like not even in high school but maybe like in grade school so we didn't know any better but my name is Corey, and he would call me c man c man <laughs> yeah what about that is not family friendly i don't understand well all right uh, got it that takes that took me a second. I'm trying to figure out the C, but never mind. Okay, um, what do we got over here? Uh, I guess this is like some kind of news or something. I don't really know, but uh, oh no, it's still it's still letters. They're just really short letters. Yeah. Whatever happened to Atari? Why hasn't the company made another system since the Jaguar? Well, why look would at the they? Jaguar, I mean, I don't. I guess. Yeah. Look at look at the jag. Yeah, uh, Freestyle Metal X for PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. I mean that drawing's pretty. Looks 2003. like two thousand It looks kind of like almost like a garbage pail kid. Sort of ish. Metal X Matt, Freestyle. I mean I don't know. That's what they could have called him. Yeah. Or Mad Mad Mike Jones. They could well, yeah. It's a, uh, there's a lot of letters in here, man. Yeah, buyers beware. Oh, so that's the watchdog. I remember this being oh, kind of cool. You know the watchdog? Well, sort of. It just kind of has, you know, it's kind of like the uh, the game doctor. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but it says uh, this month the watchdog takes a bite out of IGI2 covert strikes many bugs and offers some tips on setting up your router to host games. I don't think I'm. I mean, it's it's cool that that is in there. It's cool. I, I'm saying I think I'm gonna not read it to all of the good people yeah. watching. Uh, and then over here is a five dollar off coupon for Hulk. Floating Net Pro off on a tangent. Final tangent sends you free high production value games you can download in seconds. Suddenly you're not just playing Minesweeper anymore. So I don't. I guess this is some sort of, uh, well, not streaming game service, but it almost sounds like an early version of like Steam or something. But right. With most, I've never heard it. Maybe you've heard of it. I never. No, I never heard tangent, of that. But um, I wonder how long they stuck around for. Yeah. Probably not very long. Probably or they not. got just bought by somebody. Uh, oh, well, little action about the PS3 here. PS3 cell chip update. Why is this so thick? Kind of oh, crazy. That there's something good coming up. I mean, the cell. Yeah. Processor. I remember it, like just them talking about it for so long mm-hmm. before anything was even shown for it. But they they knew what the name of it was for, like basically right before like after the uh, the PS2 came out. Back when they used to have, like, these really cool, like, wasn't the PS2 the Emotion Engine? Emotion Engine, yeah. I mean, that's what we need. To, that's what they need to do is they need to really bring back the, uh, the, the give, you know, consoles cool processor names. That's what I think. Uh, and what else? Um, well, I just thought this one was kind of neat. Well, not even neat. I don't know. I just, like, because I remember ordering this thing. Uh, it says GBA SP Harder to Hear. Waiting for the GBASP headphone adapter to appear at a retailer near you? Stop waiting. It's not coming to store shelves. It's only available via special order from Nintendo itself. In order to reduce the cost of the GBASP for all consumers, Nintendo made the decision not to include the audio adapter in the final packaging, uh, said Nintendo in a statement. Instead, interested consumers can obtain the headphone jack by contacting Nintendo's consumer service department or visiting their website. So, uh, I don't know. I just, I remember, uh, I ordered one of those. I still have it around here somewhere. Uh, you know, because I enjoyed playing the Game Boy Advance with, uh, with headphones on. 
And it's a real shame because the Game Boy Advance has such good audio. And, you know, to have the SP get released and not come with any way to output that audio to anything was uh, was a real shame. But um, I mean, it says here that it the... It like a very Nintendo thing to do. Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, or, you know... Well, people say that, like, you know, Nintendo's like the Apple of the video game world, and this would be an, right. ex- this would be an example of that. Uh, yeah. And they only want 425 I just think it's funny, in order to reduce the cost of the GBA SP, like, how much more would that console have cost if they had stuck the adapter in the box, you know? Like a dollar. Yeah. Like... Right, but could you have seen, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, the, the new GBA SP is one hundred dollars and ninety nine cents. And be like, well that's kind of a weird price. Why'd you do that? Well it was gonna be ninety nine ninety nine, but you know, then you guys complained about the adapter, so we stuck that in there. So now it's one hundred ninety nine, you know? Like yeah. it's not about keeping the price low, it's about profit margins, right? And it's like, well yeah. we're gonna have this adapter that costs twelve cents to make. But if we put it in there and it gets sold in like, you know, five million consoles, then, you know, you can do the math. Probably already making a decent amount anytime. Man, they're like going crazy on the Hulk here. Yeah, but th- look at this. You think it's crazy. Like, buckle up because it's going to get crazier. Oh, here we go. Like, it doesn't even fit. That same, man. I'm going to have to. I think is that, out is that Hulk, that, that, that's Hulk. That's not even Hulk Ultimate Destruction. It's just Hulk. Which I which I do have. Hulk. But. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but if you get uh if you get some Vicks Vapo rub and if you rub it on here like every day for like a month, that'll that'll clear right up. Uh yeah, anyway, I don't know. I never played the game, but I'm I'd be willing to bet that it sucks. Yeah, well, Hulk, Hulk Ultimate Destruction is is pretty good. It's not based on the movie though. I always hate this. It was called. It's just called Hulk. Yeah, the Hulk. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, oh, check this out. I used to have this. Uh, the Logitech Netplay controller. You remember? Oh, I'm sorry. We're still zoomed out. Um, here, look at this. I can. I don't have the cool phone thing you do, but I can. We can get in there <laughs> tight because I don't have my. My camera's not up on the next floor, you know, <laughs> shining down through it's a not hole. bolted to the ceiling. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, this was pretty cool. I remember I picked one of these up because I thought it might be cool to have, uh, to use with my, because uh, I think they made one that was either USB or something like that. Because my memory is that I picked something like this up to use with my uh, modded Xbox. But, uh, huh? I, don't, I mean, we're talking about, you know, something that happened 15 years ago so and i'm sure i didn't pay i must have gotten it used because there's no way i would have paid 70 bucks for that uh, yeah yeah anyway. i mean I've, I've never seen that the only one i'm familiar with is the the gamecube one that's the yeah the fancy star online gamecube one yeah and then over here you got hot at the arcades Virtua cop 3 yeah, that's pretty cool i've never played that i've never even seen it in action before i haven't either but i just saw Virtua cop and got excited did it ever get ported to anything because i know there was a version of Virtua Cop 2 that came out on the on the PS2. But has Virtua Cop 3 ever been ported to any console? I'm sure someone in the chat can. Yeah, can someone in the chat can get on that because I don't uh, I don't know. Oh yeah. We got some, we got some Pokemon over there. Yeah, Pokemon. Um so I guess this because Ruby and Sapphire were two uh GBA titles, right? So these cards must have been yes, go yeah. along with with those, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I really don't know anything about Pokemon. So. Yeah, I, it's it's a huge blind spot for me too. I mean, yeah. the first first generation, I can I know like a decent amount of them just because I worked in at EB EB Games yeah. at the time. Yeah. But I mean, now there's like like eight hundred Pokemon or something like that. That's a lot. Uh, hey, action replay carts. What do you think about? Oh yeah, uh, I mean, we got PS2, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, and SP and Xbox. Did you uh, you ever? I mean, I guess maybe you have one now, but I mean, did you ever have one of these like when it was current? Uh, I didn't. I mean, I had the action replay on, on for the uh, Saturn, so I could play import games. But right. I mean, other than that, the only other other cheat device I ever had was uh, 
Game Genie on the, for the Genesis. Really? Yeah, I mean, stuff like this, I mean, like it was there, like Action Replay and Game Shark, I mean, they are basically the same thing. I mean, I mean, is there, I mean is there pretty one much. Considered better? Do you think CodeJunkies.com is still a thing? Uh, I don't know. I bet you the game FAQs bought them. Probably. Or something like that. I'm, I'm going to check right now. Man, really? who... Like, who started Game game Facts or Game FAQs? Because that got that bought out like, by, like, GameStop or something, right? I mean... Uh, game, uh, not game, game spot, uh, yeah, game, uh, game, game spot. Bob. Yeah. Yes. It was, uh, Somebody must've gotten rich off of that. CJC. Yeah. He had, I it's, remember cause he had the same is who? initials as his name. CJC. I don't People know. People are that. saying it. C, C, J, A, Y, oh, C, J, C. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing he made, you know, seven figures easily off of that deal. So check this out. There is. Oh boy something at Code Junkie still, and there's, there is such thing as a there was a action replay for the 3DS. Really? According to this, yeah. Here it is. Power saved. Action replay power saves for Amiibo. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, of course. The action replay <laughs> the SD Media Launcher. I mean, if you have, oh. if you've run Swiss on your GameCube, that's an action replay I have not. product. Also, Code Junkie is a retro. Yeah. Hey, do you watch um, do you watch Bitheads? Uh, you know, con like plexiglass console building. Uh, videos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I haven't I haven't watched his newest one, his PS4 one. Yeah, I I was uh, I'm not gonna say what it is. I want to spill the beans, but uh, I emailed him the other day just to get some input from him because I want to do a, a PC Engine shooter mixtape. Yeah. And so I was going to try, I wanted to get like Shmup Junkie and Bithead both involved, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he, you know, he gave me his input on some stuff to include. And then he's all here, I think you're going to like this. And he took a picture of the next console that he's building. Yeah. So, you know, every single one that he does is like, you know, it's like he learns stuff making one. It's like, okay, I'm now I'm going to, you right. know, I'm going to go even bigger for the next one. <laughs> I can't wait. And I mean... He usually like gives them away, doesn't he? He doesn't. I think he, he only gives away the NES ones because he just, you know, I think he's kind of got the system down, you know, so it's a little bit easier to make those. I think all the rest of them he keeps, because even with the NES ones, I think the ones that are like unique, he keeps. You know, like did you see the Eddie Van Halen one that he did? Yes. Yeah, like I don't think no. he's not giving that away to anybody. I don't think. Yeah. Um, I'll be looking. I'll be looking forward to see what it's going to be. Yeah. Did he give you some good tunes? Uh, like. So, yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. What What has the reaction been to that mixtape? Uh, I think I it's mean, got I the most. Had... I think it has the most dislikes of any video I've uploaded on this channel. Uh, which I mean is kind of understandable, just because I mean I don't think anybody subscribed to my show because they want to see mixtapes. But I just thought it was the coolest thing, and I'm gonna keep doing it because a lot of people seem. The thing is, it's just like you make that a playlist. You make oh, a playlist I'm going out to. Of those. I'm going to. But that's that's the thing is like those. I didn't make that with the intention that someone is gonna like sit down and watch it. Like the whole idea of that is like throw it on when you're doing something, just so that you can hear it. And and yeah, only having one is like okay. Well, that's kind of whatever. But imagine if there was like four or five, or you know, if they were in 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 uh, one big playlist, like you said. Yeah. Um, Plus, like, I just think it's cool because then I have the tape. Because, like, down here, if I want to listen to it, I'm just going to pop the tape in. And, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get a tape deck as soon as you like, should. I already, I'm already making a copy of that tape for uh, two other people, so I can make you a copy. Uh, I have I some. Think that's cool. I'm getting I mean, all nerdy about it. I ordered some blank. Uh, uh, they're called J cards, but it's like the insert that you put into the yeah. into the cassette. I ordered like some printable sheets of those where it's like cardstock and it's perforated. And uh, I got some That's printable really cool. uh, cassette labels, and um, yeah, so I already I already made the second mixtape, but I'm waiting. One of the things I want to do is I want to you know just because it I think it's interesting is I want to use different tapes like like I used a Max L U R tape for the first one, so like I don't want to yeah. use another Max L U R. I want to use something else, and so I ordered I got right, a, you wanna... I got a bunch of different tapes coming. 
And um, I think that's pretty exciting. I mean, so yeah. if we like when we do this mixtape club yeah. thing you talked about, the should club, it be yeah. just like game music, or do you think it should be? It could be like anything. I think if we're just going to swap mixtapes, you can make it anything. But I'm not going to put anything on my channel that's not game music because I don't want to get busted. Right. I mean, I'm already right. running a risk getting busted just with with video game music. So. Uh, you know, speaking speaking of getting busted really quick, uh, like due to music. Yeah. Uh, I like I had my Twitter, uh, the My Life in Gaming Twitter account suspended uh, for like a little while today because I got like a DMCA on a on a two and two and a half year old tweet of. Uh, but they actually suspended your Twitter account for a little because I had that happen. I, I had to like go in and like like agree to all this stuff to get it reactivated. Wow. Uh, and the, the tweet was like yeah, from, so was, it was, was like, uh, like the uni universal media group or something like that, because yeah. I had that, <laughs> because I had that, you know, the, um, the song from Ferris Bueller, like the, Oh yeah. 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 That song. Yeah. That it's like, it's that song playing over top of a very slow, uh, ad yeah. to, uh, of, panning to the guy from the from the uh gyrus ad uh -huh. i can't remember his name with the mullet jamie bunker jamie bunker jamie like, bunker professional gamer have some respect remember the man's name it's, but it's like this very like long uh that sounds pretty funny slide over to him with yeah. that song playing in the background yeah <laughs> and like two two and a half years later i like yeah got the got what? the Twitter account suspended for well, a while. Well, it's funny because that's what I got. I got. I've only ever had one of my tweets have you know the same thing happen with the DMCA takedown, and it was because I went to the record store one day, and they had um, you remember Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock? They had that one song. It takes two, you know. Uh, yeah. And like, is that it takes two to make a thing go right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a very popular song in like the late late eighties, I think it was, and um, like I would have bought it anyway, just because like you know how awesome is it to have that on vinyl, but yeah. uh, I bought it and it was like only a week or two after like not to keep bringing up Bithead, but but he he had mentioned that song on his show, like he started like rapping it like just in the middle of his show. And so when I got that, I was like, oh, I got to, like, show it to him or whatever. So, like, I, I put that yeah. song on and then just did, like, a little pan over, like, you know, from, you know, I had the 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 vinyl slipcover or whatever, like, propped up and, like, panned over to the record player and everything and, and then, you know, put it on Twitter. And then, like, six months later or something, I get, like, an email saying, oh, your tweet has been, like, DMCA, you know, whatever. Uh, striking while the uh, you know striking while the iron is hot. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't know. You can go ahead and take it down now. Like you know, it's I'm I'm not using it anymore. You know. Uh, like, sorry, we got I said we got five bucks from Jonathan Henson. Said you made me plug my tape deck my tape deck. Excuse me, uh, back up to my hi-fi setup. What kind of uh, tape deck do you have? Uh, I'd be curious. Uh, some people were excited. Oh, I'm glad you got a Denon or whatever. But it's like that was the only option. Like. Yeah. Like Denon, like I hold Denon in very, very high regard. So it's like Denon or Sony but to me. My AV is receiver like, is a Denon. Your what? My AV receiver is a Denon. There you go. So, uh, but I was happy that that's what they had, you know, because to me it was like, ah, cool, a Denon. But yeah. I'm still I'm looking gonna go, I'm going to go to the record store and, and get one. You should, dude. Uh, there is, I mean, there's a record store that used to be, I would have already gone if I hadn't moved, but yeah. uh, it's right around the corner from where I used to live. Yeah. And uh, they get like all this, all this stuff from. Cool. Well, can, considering that you get diehard game fans and I get game pros from 2003, you're probably gonna walk in there and find like a Nakamichi three head deck for like you know 150 bucks, just so I can hate you a little bit more. Anyway, uh, so uh, we get to the uh, cover story here on uh, Jack Two, or as they say, all jacked up. Yep. And uh, I, don't, I gotta be honest and say I've never really played any of the Jack Jack and Daxter games or or the, the Jack solo games. I just it's is good. Yeah. And then and like the first one is you know it's very good. Uh, 
excuse me, a very good like mascot platformer, and it was Belch notable on my at the time show? because Belch on your own show. <laughs> I I I tried to hide yeah, it. I don't know. Uh, but I remember it was very notable. The first Jack was notable because they had uh, this consistent, over, like a consistent world where basically very little loading. Like once you got into an area, you, it was just kept cool. on sprawling. And it, it was like one of the, like a game that used a lot of like streaming directly off of the disc. Yeah. And I really liked it. I liked the That's first cool. one. I th- still think the first one's pretty good. And then the second one, I, it's like, it's weird what they did. I have no idea. Like, maybe they just didn't want to make another uh, typical platformer, so they have something happen where, you know, Jack is is, is very, like, is, he doesn't have any dialogue in the original game. Yeah. And then I guess he just, like, got sucked through some portal and gets sent into the future, and he's, like, tortured for all this, for, like, a bunch of, like, a long time, and then... It sounds like a game like, you should let your kid play, because it'd probably build some character. Yeah. There's no no face melting on that one though. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like it's got like guns and everything. It's it's weird. I don't really know exactly what they're like why they decided to do that. Yeah. I don't know. I just uh, never played any of these games just cuz like, you know, at this time I was primarily a PC gamer, you know, and I had hmm. a, I had a PS2 just so I could like play PS1 games, watch DVDs, rent a lot of PS2 games. I bought a fair amount of PS2 games, but this is just not like Jack and Daxter kind of stuff was like not the kind of thing that I was ever going to be into, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just, it seemed like a weird decision for them to make. It seemed like, it seemed very appropriate, I guess, for 2003. Yeah. Here's an ad for uh, Donkey Kong Country for uh, GBA SP. Never played that version. Yeah. Chain of Command. Oh, here's another example. Oh. Ratchet and Clank. I never played uh, any of these games. Either. I don't even know what kind of game it is. It looks oh, kind of neat. That's, that's Going Commando. That's the second one. And yeah. that is, I mean. You know, after, when I think crack normally crack normally time, Going Commando means, you know. Not wearing underwear. Yeah. So that's kind of. Well, yeah. I mean, the in the third one is called Up Your Arsenal. Wow. So they are going for a, a theme with that. Yeah, like they're uh, saying arsenal, but they really mean your b-hole. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And really, this one is the first one that kind of take like define how Ratchet and Clank games play. Well, how, becomes, I mean, can you explain? I don't. I mean, I just don't even know like what 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 are these it's, games it's like? It's almost like it uses like. Uh, you can when you lock in your shooting, you can. You, turns into kind of like a uh almost like a first person shooter but not with like uh, you know it's third person first person style shooting mm-hmm. but you can like flip and jump around and i think it's really fun do you have the a ta- one, do you have a taser there's no taser because i don't know if you've ever played there's, there's this, a lot of there's this game weapons. uh there's this third person shooter on the playstation i don't know if you ever heard of it. it's called siphon filter and your guy has a taser and you can like tase people to death I don't know if you ever heard of that. Game. I, you know, I only, like, I I'll, I'll only play a game that has a taser if they catch on fire. Yeah. From being tased. Otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point? But I, I feel like if you tried, uh, uh, uh Ratchet and Clank Two, yeah. that one, uh, Going Commando, this I one. think that you would really like it. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I just, I never, I just never checked it out. So. For the longest time, uh, Try used to say that he feels that Jack and Dexter, or not Jack and Dexter, uh, Ratchet and Clank, uh, uh, Ratchet and Clank is is how he imagines a fully 3D Contra game should play. Wow. Which I'm not sure if I completely agree with it, but I could see the similarities to it. Did you because see a uh, lot of the appeal is like the crazy weapons you get in it? Too. Yeah. I saw um, what's that website called with all the. ROM hacking, the ROM hacking website, you know, like I follow them on Twitter or something. And today they released somebody made like an easy mode version of the original Contra. Really? Yeah. So that's like how, how much easier does it need to be? I wonder. I don't know. I just, I just, it's one of those things I read that and just kind of shook my head, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, I, I talked about this in our end of the year video that, that we put out and, 
You know, I always had this idea that Contra was like this really ridiculously hard game. When we were kids, that I, was the I reputation. Ne- I never that it tried had. playing it without thirty lives. Yeah. And and then when I sat down to try it to try to beat it without without the code, like I was able to be, like yeah. fully play through it and beat it in. Yeah, it's not any like, harder than any other similar game. You just you got to practice, no. but I mean, it's not. You know, it's easier than like Ghosts and Goblins. Oh. <laughs> Yes. That's like, hard. By far. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway. Um, oh, hey. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is more Ratchet and Clank over here. Over here, though, is uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I don't know, Let Legacy of Goku 2 or something for Game Boy Advance. I don't know. Have you ever watched, I guess, you know, the cartoon or the ant anime or whatever? Like, I... I regularly get these comments on my channel from people who say that I sound exactly like the narrator. Like, I guess, I guess maybe like at the beginning of each episode, like somebody says something like last time on Dragon Ball Z or something like that. And people always leave these comments and like, Oh, anybody ever say that this guy, like someone, I got one today. I think like, has anybody ever told you? And it's like, yeah, dude, I get that like once a week. But, uh, I mean, to me, I don't know. That's probably a compliment, I guess, you know, like, yeah, I mean, it makes me want to check. I've never even looked it up. I don't know why I should, I should check it out and see how similar I think. Uh, I, I, I I'm, I'm not a dragon ball yeah. person, you know, I, I, you know, sometimes I like to call it dragon bulls, but other than that, you know, like, I don't really, like, I never really watched it. It was, it was, uh, more popular like after i was already yeah like out of high school and stuff yeah i mean i I did watch some anime like back back then i you know i i I like to say a lot of times and that my my favorite anime is probably project aiko which is like kind of a Um, weird choice i think for that but it's uh you know it's like it's I, i i like the like the the 80s style yeah Somebody says, uh, Jonathan says, drive your voice down to a deeper baritone. No, the thing you do in that case is you just have to get like really close in on the mic and then it sounds more like, you know, oomphy, you know. Next time. Yeah. Or this last time. Yeah. On Dragon Balls. Yeah. Proximity effect, that's called with a microphone. Next time on My Uh, Life in Gaming. Everybody. Everybody likes to talk about like, oh, you know, who would who'd win between Goku and and Superman? Oh, I don't know. Did you see like uh, yesterday that like one of the things that was trending on Twitter was like gatekeeping, and it was because some like some anime fan like like he uh, tweeted out like some that, like, like oh, if, you don't, if you only know these things, yeah, then you're not like a real. And it's funny, I read that tweet and I'm like, I don't even know any of those things, so I must be like. <laughs> I'm like a number one loser, according to this guy. Yeah, I mean, we're you know, he can't even pretend to be a fan. You, you can, no, the only one I recognized in there, I think, was uh, was Dragon Ball Z. So, although um, you know, if I, Project Aiko was not on that list, so does that mean that I'm a I'm yeah, a you're, real? You're anime you're like fan, a even though you're an insider if you know Project whatever you just said. Um, Project Aiko. <laughs> Aiko, right? But what about what about people that, like uh, Ninja Scroll wasn't on there, was it? Because I feel like a lot of people. I don't know what that is either. Probably, their their first anime was probably Ninja Scroll. I don't know. I never, I never heard of it. Um, or Wicked City. <laughs> I've seen Fist of the North Star when I was like so when I was oh, in yeah. high school. Somebody made me watch it, and I think that might be the only anime movie I've ever seen. Oh no no, no. I saw uh, um, what is it called? Graveyard of the Fireflies or something like that. Oh, that is like that's a horribly that's depressing it's movie. Super, super depressing. Yeah, super depressing. Yeah, and uh, I mean, maybe I should have my. Yeah, you should have your kid watch that. <laughs> you you know what you need to do? You need to put together a short playlist of videos to just take that poor kid on like an emotional roller coaster ride. You know, like uh, like like make yeah. him watch. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark first and then when like the guy's face melts off and like the kid starts crying be like oh my god I'm so sorry son uh, let, let's just cartoon. let's just watch a cartoon and you'll feel better and then and then throw on Graveyard of the Fireflies or whatever it's called uh, 
All right, so uh, Secret Weapons over Normandy. I never played this game, but I remember this was a game that I would kind of notice at the store and be like, hey, that looks kind of cool. You got nothing over there? Not really. Radio I mean, silence. I, I think, yeah, stuff like it was, it was like the Luft, Luftwaft or whatever it's called. Luft, like Luftwaffe. The... Um, I'm surprised I never got it because this came out for PS2, Xbox, and PC. And at this time, like I said, I was in college, and um, I mentioned this on a, on a stream before, but uh, my college roommate ran, like, I think one of the biggest, like, where's FTP sites in the country. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, like, he like he had the FTP site, and then he had, like, an IRC channel that was, like, associated with it, and, yeah. like... Any t- so he would get like uploaded to his FTP site pretty much every game that came out like he would get it the day before it came out and so I was and then he would give me anything or he just gave me access to the site and so like I could just get anything I wanted uh, so I'm surprised I never got uh, this game and in fact if any time if there was a game that I wanted that nobody uploaded like all he had to do was go into his IRC chat and just be like somebody upload this to the site like now. And then I would be playing it like two hours later. But so uh, I don't know why I never got uh, this one. Because it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Saga. I can't say anything about that. What is it? Oh, Unlimited Saga. Yeah, it's just like another. Looks cool. Like Saga Frontier. Yeah. You know, those, those games. Uh, it looks cool in the screenshots, but it's like impenetrable to play. I guess. Oh, I see. Uh, no, we're here. You're you're playing the SOCOM game. I always just think of SOCOM as that was like one of those games where like it actually used the PS2's network adapter and you could get the little headset. And I never I never played it. I me either. Okay. I, I you know it's another one of those online games. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, Chaos Legion by Capcom for the PS2. I never played that either, but I I. Remember that character. PSM says, if you love Devil May Cry, you'll love Chaos Legion. Yeah. Yeah. I bet uh, you Devil May Cry is better because, I mean, there was never a Chaos Legion 2. Oh, that's true. Oh, we got Yu-Gi-Oh! over there. Yeah. I don't, I don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! Nope. Except for, you know, kids would come in when I worked at Electronics. You got to get, you have, have any Yu-Gi-Oh! cards? And did you? Yeah, I mean, okay. we did in his Pokemon cards and, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Magic the Gathering. Yeah. All of which I think are still around. If I had I kept mean, my... Grown, grown adults are buying 50 Happy Meals to get Pokemon cards. Yeah, if I if I had kept all my Magic the Gathering cards, I could probably retire now. Like, it, <laughs> it pains me that I, I sold them all off when they weren't... Were, because I was just like, uh, no one, who's going to keep playing Magic the Gathering? I should get out while the getting's good. But that was in like ninety four, ninety five. I sold all my cards. So. That stuff would be worth, yeah, so oh, much yeah. money. Be, yeah, it's it, it's basically like, like big Bitcoin these days. Yeah, or that other one, Do- Doji Coin or Do- Doggy Coin, whatever. Like that one's yeah. that one's going way up. That's like the poor man's Bitcoin. But uh, you yeah. know, I've been paying a lot more attention to the stock market lately because you know I, you know, bought a bunch of GameStop <laughs> stock and whatnot. You know. So. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, still waiting for that squeeze to happen. Um, <laughs> hasn't yet. Uh, anyway, there's some SOCOM stuff. Nobody cares, but hey, over here, uh, Rock and Roll Racing uh, for the Game Boy Advance. That's another super. Like you know, the Game Boy Advance really had this reputation of being just a, a Super Nintendo, like a portable Super Nintendo, even though in fact. The Game Boy Advance hardware is quite a bit more powerful than a Super Nintendo, right. but but so many Super Nintendo games ended up getting uh, ported to the Game Boy Advance, which is probably one of the reasons I thought the system was so cool. Is uh, I didn't have a Super Nintendo, and so I was buying up some of these games oh, and getting to play them for the first okay. time. And I remember this Blizzard Arcade Classics uh, here. Maybe we can pull a Corey here. See Blizzard Arcade Rock- Classics. Yeah. Uh, Because I bought, uh, they also released Blackthorn under the Blizzard Arcade's classic, Blizzard Arcade Classics label. 
And uh, I played Blackthorn on the PC, but it's, I mean, same difference yeah. if you play it on. Blackthorn uh, is the game. That's the one where you can shoot backwards without looking right yeah, with dude. a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. That game's pretty awesome. But so is Rock I mean, and Roll Racing. That, that's too, obviously like the thing I remember the most about the game because yeah. I'd never seen a single other game that had as bad a badass of a move. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a the the no look. Yeah, uh, Dragon Ball And you Ball can Z. kill the hostages too. Yeah, see, I you know I'm kind of a weird you know I'm weird in that it's like I would play the game and then like if I accidentally shot one of those guys I would feel like really bad. Like even though it's like just a video game, who cares? Well, they're like chained like, to the wall and like. Yeah, like know, they've already got it hard enough, and then you come along and shoot them in the face with a shotgun. But, but what do you what do you expect from somebody named Blackthorn? True, true. <laughs> uh, so we'll probably not read about the future legacy of Dragon Ball Z, yeah. and then uh, for some reason they decided to make uh, a video game based on the Steve McQueen movie, The Great Escape. Uh, Which I've never seen. No, me either. But uh, that's but that's weird. I mean, that's I feel I feel like at the time there was a lot of games that were based on really old properties that just came out for some unknown reason. Oh Although yeah, I can't so, think of any other sorry. Ones Show in the head. chat is said is that talking about squirrel abuse at the bottom? And yes, it says only you can prevent squirrel abuse. Huh. I don't know what that is referring to. But anyway, uh, oh, there's a little insert in here. Fly the freaky skies. Explore the most enthralling and freaked out places on Earth and beyond. That's not the kind of thing you'd see in a kid-friendly magazine right there. No, not too much. What game is this, though? I don't understand. Oh, it's called Freaky Flyers from Midway. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you didn't hear it. I bet, I bet it sucks. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I hate to judge before all the facts are in, but that uh, seems like it probably sucks. Dragon Ball Z. Legendary. Oh, oh, there's there's Ultimate Muscle over there. Is that mm. Ultimate Muscle? It is. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah, know did they you, made you, it. You're you're probably like old enough to have had like the muscle figures, right? I wish I. They're upstairs. I still have some muscle figures. Somebody uh, oh. somebody sent them to me. I don't remember. Was it was like Mike or. Mike or Josh or someone. Nah, uh, one Mike of the regulars McFly sent me a few, I think. What's that? Is that Mike McFly who's in the in the chat? Yeah, he might have. I don't know. He's he sent me a bunch of cool stuff, but or maybe that's did cool. I, if maybe... I ever saw them anywhere, I would definitely get some. Because I, I had a bunch of them. Do you remember that? Like there was like the the like you know the the flesh colored ones, and then later they had like ones that were different colors, and those were kind of like not as cool. Like I always felt like those were kind of like cheap. Like the original flesh colored yeah. ones were like the good ones. Exactly, exactly. I, I never bought any of the the colored ones. It's always the you call them flesh colored. Yeah, I, I think you're not supposed to say color, that like anymore. Peach, but like like peach colored or people um, try to say that because they think it's like more PC than saying flesh colored. But like, how is peach colored? That's not if I if I bit into a peach and it was that color, I'd throw it out. Like I don't know what you call it. You know, they were they were yeah. Caucasian muscle men. I don't know how else to put it, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember my friend Jonathan and I were pretty into muscle men because they were cheap, you know. But I remember he stuck one in the microwave and left it in there long enough that it actually started to, like, melt and bubble up a little bit. <laughs> I never did that. But, like, I used to have wrestling tournaments with mine, you know. Yeah. Didn't, didn't the muscle, like, didn't it stand for something? Yeah. But I don't remember what. But, yes, here it was a it was an acronym. Somebody else can maybe look it up. Yeah. Look at, look at that guy, though. It's like... Yeah. It looks... I mean, I wouldn't like, mind uh, checking that. Were there other games? Like, were there earlier games than... His, his mouth looks like a donut. <laughs> oh, man. I've been on this donut kick lately. Like, I've been eating donuts, like, yeah. two, three times a week, you know? I ate donuts today oh. for breakfast. It was awesome. So, there's this place here yeah. that we just found out about called... It's called Moonrise Donuts. Yeah. And it's kind of amazing. So they they open at six o'clock in the evening. Oh my god! I, I, they're I love all it already. they're all about like, it's like it's for people who like their idea behind it is like for yeah. people who go to who work like overnight. Sure. So they're just getting up. Yeah. They want to have like have a donut for breakfast, and they can go to Moonrise Donuts. So yeah, uh, it's pretty it's pretty amazing. They have different stuff, and they have like they have like warm donuts you can get, and. Uh, 
I mean, people like wait outside. Yeah, that's pretty for cool. For them to open. We do have a donut shop here in town that stays open until midnight. So that's pretty cool. But See, that's that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, that's not where I went today, but, uh, I mean, any, to me, pretty much any donut's a good donut unless it's like old. Yeah. And even then. Which, uh, which, like uh, you, do you like, uh, like old fashioned donuts, cake donuts or like original, like the fluffy uh, I'll ones? eat like anything. Oh yeah. No, I mean, I'll, I'll it, eat any of them. I mean, I mean, you must have some kind of donut like, allegiance. I, have a, I mean, if I had a choice, I'd get yeah. something with like. Like some sort of cream in, on the inside. Really, dude? Yeah, but but I mean, so. I don't like any kind of filled donut, like, like, like jelly like, donut like, like or cake like donuts custard. are good. Yeah. Uh, when I lived in New York, there's there's a place in in uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Maple called, Bar, uh, exactly. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Called uh, Peter Pan Donuts, which was like they had the best red velvet hmm. donuts. I just like like a glazed donut. Like it's like you know it's like the margarita pizza of a do- of donuts you know like, but I like glazed donuts. Maple bars are also good, but anything filled, yeah. I don't. Or bear claws, bear claws are good. Yeah. Or donut holes. Yeah, a dozen donut yeah, holes. Yeah, yeah, I'll eat. Because I can make those last I'll... longer. Like, and when I say longer, I'm saying like maybe I can make a bag of donut holes last all the way through a cup of coffee, whereas like a donut. I'll probably finish the donut before I even start the coffee. And it's it's like it's not like not even eating a whole donut. You know, you can eat a whole box when it's only like you ate probably four donuts instead of Yeah. I'd have to weigh them. I don't know how like how many I don't know how many donut equivalents a donut hole is. Old fashioned donuts, apple fritters and bear claws. Yeah. That, uh, Cody Sandusky is saying jelly donuts remind me of private pile and pull. Exactly. <laughs> a jelly donut. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I don't like. Hey, you should like show your jelly. kid Full like, Metal Jacket, like, like, dude. like Bavarian cream. Oh donuts. yeah, those are those are all right. I just, I think in general, I don't like cream filled donuts, but I mean, they're all right. I wouldn't like turn yeah, one. About, what, if somebody said, "Hey, man, I brought you a, a custard donut," I would say thank you and I would enjoy it, you know. But I'm just saying yeah, it wouldn't probably. be my first choice. What about uh, what about cream horns? You ever had cream horns? I don't. Maybe that's a regional thing. I, never I mean, they're, they're kind of like horn. croissants with uh, like like cream filling in them. That's uh, what they I were just, at least that's what they were called it at my grocery store. They they always I, call them cream horns. Okay. I just like. Look at that. I mean, I just like croissants. Like they don't have to have anything in them or on them or you know. All right. What do we got next? Oh, Goblin, this is the one you were excited about, Goblin Commander. So since you were so goblin. excited, please tell us all about Goblin Commander. No, I'm, I mean, okay. I, I just like saying the word goblins. Yeah. I, hey, speaking of, you know, to make a little tag back to 10 minutes ago, uh, when I was playing Magic the Gathering, I had a goblin deck that I built. Oh, really? Yeah, that did was we, my, my main deck was a had, goblin like... deck. What? <laughs> goblins. Yeah. Who doesn't like goblins? Ooh, hey, has your kid seen yeah. Gremlins yet? No, no. Because you I could mean, sucker him in with Gizmo. I, 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 and I then... pitched it a couple of times. I okay. pitched it, and it's like, no. It's okay. like, I like that. that is like oh, this actually is, this really This will be scary. fun to read. Check this out. Yeah, a new egg ad. We're going to zoom in on this. Ah. Let's see what things we're going apparently... for. Hey, an eye pack. You remember eye packs? I had one of these. My no, my is that like is that like a like a like a little tablet thingy? Uh, well, it's like a smaller than a tablet. You know, like a uh, like a Palm Pilot or something like that. Yeah, that's, but, that's the word I was. But the eye pack yeah, was Palm was like full color with a backlit screen. Like I had one of those for a while because like my the same you know Mister uh, Mister FTP server uh, college mm-hmm. roommate guy. He had one and he got bored of it, and so he sold it to me for like super cheap. Uh, ah. What do we got here? 80, 80 gigabyte hard drive, ninety six bucks. Uh, what else is cool? Oh, RAM. How much is RAM? Five hundred and twelve megabytes of RAM was seventy eight dollars. Uh, Pentium four two point four. I don't think I think I had a two point oh. Uh. ATI radio monitor is just a 17 inch LCD for 
four hundred dollars. Oh, this one right here, yeah. ViewSonic Perfect Flat Monitor. That'd be that wouldn't be a bad monitor to have now. Like to plug a yeah, plug an exactly. upscaler all this into, stuff, you know. You know, you gotta wish you had all this stuff now. At least yeah. I do. Two hundred and fifty six megabyte SD card, sixty five bucks. <laughs> so, uh, Papa uh, Nebdoza, Nebdoza is yeah, and Newegg is is back when Newegg was good. When did I? Because I remember Newegg being like that used the to be place the place to go, right? to go for yeah. like their. PC parts to like stuff. order computer parts and like when did they stop being good? I don't. Know. I feel like now when I go look at Newegg, it, it almost feels like being on like AliExpress or something. You know? Yeah, because they do all that like third party seller stuff. Yeah. Before it felt like they were kind of vouching for everything that they sold. I was hoping they had like a Nvidia graphics card. There's an ATI. Yeah, there's ATI an a- All in Wonder. Oh, um, which? Uh, I don't know. I just see the Sapphire ATI Radeon. Yeah, there's that one. There's a, a Radeon 9500, and then there's a, this is a TV tuner card, and then a sound card, another sound card. But yeah, because I, I had a G, I had a, a NVIDIA GeForce 3 TI 500. Oh, there's also the PC version of Enter the Matrix. Yeah, see, that's, that's 47 more dollars than I paid for my copy back then. <laughs> Uh, actually, I don't think I ever even checked out that game. Oh, hey, check it out. A USB thumbstick, 128 megabytes for 34. It's funny because I remember that, like, USB thumbsticks kind of became a thing uh, when I was in college. Yeah. Like, when I was going to college is when we kind of switched over from, like, you know, in the earlier, like, when I was in community college, we would have the three and a half inch floppy disks. Like, you had two of them in, like, a little plastic clamshell case in your backpack. And then, uh, like, when I was, like, halfway through college is when uh, these thumbsticks became a thing, and you get them at Costco. I think I still have my original one, which was, like, 64 megabytes and, like, came on this big lanyard. <laughs> so that one's 128 megabytes? Yeah, 128 megabytes for 34 I bucks. mean, that's only, like, a little bit bigger than, like a, like, a zip disk. Yeah, that's correct. But the problem is, is like mo- a lot of computers didn't have zip drives, so you couldn't really just carry around yeah. a, a zip disk with you. you know, like if you went into a computer lab, they might not have a way for you to read that. Uh, oh, Did you yeah, ever have yeah. a, a zip drive? What's that? I used, I used to have a zip drive. I, I never had a zip drive, no. Uh, I don't know. I just never, I mean, I think for me it was like floppy disks were fine, you know, because all I ever had on there was like, you know, maybe a Word document or something. Uh, things like that. Uh, Tron 2.0, I remember checking this game out uh, on PC when it came out, but uh, I had never seen the Tron movie, and so for me, I think it was like... Really? Yeah. So playing it was like, this game looks really neat, but I feel like I'm kind of out of my element, or I don't really understand. Uh... Have you seen it since? No. It's one of those movies, it's like on the list of movies I need to sit down and watch, you know? I mean, I it'll be interesting to see what you'd think of the first one. I mean, the second one is is all right. It, yeah. ha- it has its moments. Like the soundtrack is really good, but it's like there's only two, like one or two, really good sequences in it. Yeah. But the first one, I, I mean, I just remember watching it every Saturday for a long time when I'd go to my dad's house on weekend, uh, like on Saturdays. Oh, when he was hungover. You know, my, my... Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And but, for I people mean, who didn't this, catch uh, VCR, the live like stream last week, VCR, that was, you know, we'd watch, we'd rent Tron a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, IndyCar series from, oh, from Codemasters. Um, Codemasters uh, does the F1 games now. So, um, I mean, people have mixed feelings about that, but I don't, I think those are fine games. So this would be, I wish they would make an IndyCar uh, game again, but you know, it's just, mm-hmm. it's just not, the series is just not popular enough, I guess. Like I don't, you'd have a hard time selling enough yeah. copies of the game, but it's too bad. Uh, Temple of Elemental Evil, Lineage 2, uh, something about those. Ultimate Game Machine. So for 2000 uh what do you get? You got one gigabyte of RAM, 120 gigabyte hard drive. Where does it say the, what processor? I mean, one it? gig of RAM is actually, you know, it's not bad. Feels like a lot. It's not bad. My blind. I'm not seeing where it says what processor they put in there. Oh, it's an AMD Athlon XP processor, though. Yeah. 
Intel man. I'm gonna turn on my space heater just so you know if you hear like a little bit of the. I the yeah, last thing I want is for you to be uncomfortable. Uh, Command and well, Conquer generals. Like... Oh yeah, yeah are you, know, you you're you must are you being affected by the storm? I know Voltar didn't have power for a couple days. I don't no, know. We if didn't he does have now. we've had power, but I mean it's it's 11 degrees here right now. Outside it's 11. Yes. I don't think I've ever even been in 11 degree weather in my life. Yeah. Well, that's you're not missing anything. No, I know. I'm just. That doesn't sound very cool. Well, it sounds very cool, actually, but not, <laughs> not in the right way. Uh, Command and Conquer Generals, I can't say that. Me Metabots? More Metabots, more power. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's a Nat Natsumi game. It is a But Natsumi I mean, game. it's just like, like, you know, just trying to... Whenever I see Natsumi, though, all I ever think of is Harvest Moon. Yeah. You know, like, that's the number I one bet, game. I bet you there's two versions I, of that. I mean so that in a good way, though, but I'm saying, like, that's, you know, what I always associate uh, Natsume with. Uh, oh, okay. Here we... in the chat is saying that it's negative ten in Wisconsin. That seems uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, okay, we get into Game Boy Advance uh, right. uh, reviews here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, first, we have Castlevania: Aria of Sorrow, which they give a. Here we can zoom in and check it out together. My my, you know my my daughter's named after that game. Really? Oh. <laughs> think i believe you no. <laughs> um yeah i don't know so anyway uh this was i mentioned this one time in a preview maybe this i don't know was this game in the in last month's read through i don't remember but uh i played all of the castlevania games on the game boy advance backwards so uh, uh. i beat this game first then I beat Harmony of Dissonance. Then I beat Circle of the Moon. And I mean, I I like all three of them. I, I know that, um, you know, the so-called uh, Metroidvania is kind of a polarizing issue. Some people don't like it. I, I mean, I like both. Like the, the old school style Castlevania games are awesome. Uh, these more open world style games are, in my opinion, also uh, awesome. Like... Uh, Symphony of the Night kind of blew me away. And so when they started making all these games right. for the Game Boy Advance, like I just felt like, you know, great because that's just more uh, more Castlevania games to play. I have, I think there's three Castlevania games on the DS and I have all three of them and I've never played any of them. Those are expensive now too. Oh, really? You I know, think I'm... Especially like, like, uh, like um, Order of Ecclesia, the, yeah. the last one that came yeah. out is like, it's like a hundred dollar game now. Or something. I bet. I mean, I have to go look to be sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of the games I have is still sealed, just because I never got around to opening it and playing it. So, Aria of Sorrow. It's a, it's it's a really good game. I mean, out of all three of those, this this is the only one of the three that I beat. Yeah. And I really liked it, and I did a lot of just kind of soul hunting in it. Yeah. Just because I thought it was fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, so you still you still have your copy of that? Did you course, ever yeah. ever see the, the copy that had like had Aria of Sorrow and uh, Harmony of Dissonance on the same cartridge? Yeah, I've seen that. I, I don't have one, but I've seen it. Like, like the box art is like one of the worst box arts. It's like box art instead of box art instead of box art or something oh. like that. I heard you like box art, so we put some box art on your box art, and then we put that box art inside of another box art. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I still have. Uh, I, I, I told the story last time, but like I didn't have Harmony of Dissonance back then. I basically borrowed it. Uh, I only had Aria of Sorrow and uh, Circle of the Moon, and then it was more recently, although still several years ago, that I bought a copy of uh, Harmony of Dissonance. Anyway, uh, down here, what? It's good, I, and you know the the first one on the DS is a direct sequel. Even has like the same character and everything in it. Same oh, that's cool. Well, I mean, I should check them out. I just never gotten around to it. Um, but I, you know, you think about that time where, you know, getting these the Metroidvania type games. Yeah. It, it it was such a rarity that it was seemed like you could never get tired of the formula, and then it seemed now yeah. it feels like so many games that use that as a formula that I just like lost track. It's, yeah. No longer seems that fun to me. I agree. Yeah. It's played out, we would say. 
and then here's a game. I mean, even though this is a first party uh, Nintendo game, this is one I never picked up. Uh, WarioWare Incorporated, uh, just because I think it's kind of like you know. Say I feel the same way about like Mario Party. Like I just never. I'm not into like mini games. And I understand that yeah, the point of Mario Party is that you play multiplayer, but just the whole idea of like, oh yeah, I'm gonna pay thirty five bucks for a bunch of mini games, or you see above, I could pay twenty nine bucks and get a Castlevania game. Like to me, that's kind of a no brainer. So, right. Uh, so I never picked one of these up. And uh, then over here we got an ad for uh, I don't know what. Oh, over here, uh, Mega, Man, Mega Man Battle Network White and Battle Network Blue. Mega Man Battle Network Three White and Blue. I don't know. I don't know anything about Mega Man Battle Network. I like Mega Man, but these yeah. don't these don't seem like your standard Mega Man game. This one is. I I, I think he's called Mega Man Exe. Oh, I've never played any of them though. But you know, obviously they were going for the Pokemon type thing where they, you got to have two versions of the same game. Look at this! Is that another? There it is. Another ultimate muscle. Yeah. Right there. Wow. It, it, you can't even tell what's going on. It's like a character select screen, and then like some yeah, those nonsensical. Are... Those seem like not the best. Not the to get all of the, here it is. Yeah. Uh, and then what else? What's up here? Oh, Space Channel Five. Uh, Ooh, Lala's Cosmic Attack. Only twenty bucks, so it's a good deal. And uh, we've got a big Walmart ad here uh, for the GameCube. One hundred and fifty bucks for a GameCube uh, at that time. Oh, and you get a the... Game Boy Player with it. No, it just says, it says in. Game Boy Player coming soon. I mean, 150 is not actually that low considering it launched for 200. I think. Yeah, but this is. I mean, what? When did the GameCube launch? 2001. So, but, yeah. So it's not. It's not that old yet. I mean. Right. It's not going to be like 100 dollars yet. Uh. That's it. I thought there was going to be more Soul Game Cal Boy Advance than that. It's a little bit disappointing. But yeah, here's Soul Calibur 2 for oh, uh, PS2, game. GameCube, and Xbox. This is a preview. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of awesome screenshots there. Yeah, I mean, did you did you play it when it came out? Uh, I think so. I don't think yeah, I ever bought cool. it. I might have rented it or something because I didn't buy mm -hmm. it, but but I, you know, because I would have been interested in that because Soul Cal, the first Soul Calibur was like one of the first uh, uh, Dreamcast games that I had. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I remember I mean, seeing it at, at GameStop, but I didn't buy it. But I played it somehow. That's one of the first times I can remember uh, Nintendo just letting somebody else use their character mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. And everybody, uh, everybody probably bought the. The GameCube version because of that. Yeah. I mean, that's the one I bought. And then you see, you remember these truth ads? Because they even had commercials on TV that was like, it was like an anti tobacco campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we, have we ever talked about that? I mean, what? I, I think you said you, you, you were a smoker at one point, weren't you? Oh, I was like, yeah, I was like a pack a day smoker for a while, yeah. Yeah, same, same here. Yeah. I still, I, I still miss I, it. I I'm not like going to lie. What? So I still miss it. Oh, I, I think about it every once in a while. Yeah. Hey, you should uh, get your like kids started smoking. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here you yeah, after he gets freaked out by the, you know, third or fourth messed up movie you show him be like, here, calm your nerves with some of these. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's you're 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 old enough now. Yeah. You had enough experiences to, to smoke. Yeah. I mean, it's like I, I th there was times where uh, I would like walk behind people who were smoking. And yeah. It's like kind of, you know. I don't know. For me, it's, it's just like solid. it's it's like in the winter. I think I crave it more. Like when it's cold out. Like if it's like a hundred yeah. degrees outside, just smoking doesn't sound great. Yeah. But like you know, like going outside on a cold day like because you know, i used to always smoke i would never smoke in my house like i would go outside and yeah. have a cigarette and going out there with my jacket on some cold weather 
you know, or, or hearing like music from around that time, like, you know, late nineties, like rock music or something just takes me back to being like in my early twenties and like, you know, the idea of having a cigarette will sound, you know, pretty good. But the funny thing about that is like, anytime I've had one sent like, you know, more recently, like if I go out drinking with people or something and have, you know, well, if I'm drinking, it's different, I guess. But anytime I've bummed a cigarette off of somebody, cause like, you know, the temptation gets the better of me it reminds me of why I quit. You know, it's like this, this really isn't that great. Like the idea of it is better than it actually is. Now if I've had three or four beers that what everything I just said is no longer correct. Then it is great. But, uh, so maybe, if, maybe the, if you're going to get your kid into it, maybe get him a little bit lubed up first, like give him a couple beers <laughs> and then be like, here, have one of these. Like, Oh, what your stomach doesn't feel so good here. Smoke this. You'll be better. I'm going to go, I gotta go down to the basement. We have uh, we have RoboCop on uh, on 4K Blu-ray. I gotta go grab it real quick. You're gonna love the first scene. I mean, I saw. I mean, I that's one of the things I like to point out that the theater's empty. You know, I saw I saw RoboCop in the theater. Yeah. When I, when it, when that came out, eighty six. I think eighty six I mean, or eighty seven, something like that. So I was like I was like eight. Yeah. When I saw RoboCop theater and i mean that's only two years old my son and you know like that movie is like incredibly violent like i know it was it was rated nc-17 before they had to like cut out yeah. like a couple of frames here and there yeah but, no i i mean i saw it i think i saw it right when it came out on home video and like it like all joking aside like i mean it really kind of like messed me up a little bit for a while you know it was like it for sure was too graphic for me. I'm talking about for like sure. the first, I mean, the first scene where what I forgot what RoboCop's name is, but um, you know, human name or whatever. But you know, he gets like his arms Herbie. blown off by Red Foreman. Oh, you know, he, he and like, gets his, his his hand shot off. Yeah, and like I, you know, like the, and at my age, I sh- that was not something I should have seen. So here's the thing: no, is like you know, no. when you think about showing your kid all this messed up stuff, think about me and and what I turned out to be like, and then you know. Put on some Rugrats, you know? Let him have his childhood. I mean, I saw, like, a lot of stuff in that theater because, you know, like, I talked about, like, you know, I realized my dad was always hungover. And yeah, he, every Saturday, just we'd go see a movie because he could, like, probably close his eyes or something. And I just saw, like, all the stuff that I should not have seen, probably. And I remember seeing RoboCop. I remember seeing... Like Die Hard Two. Oh, Die Hard Two is fine. Die Hard Two is fine, but I remember there is one scene. Yeah, I want to know what do, uh, what do you think is the messed up scene of Die Hard Two? No, I mean I I just, I, I have a very distinct memory of uh, there's this one scene where he gets called into like the police chief's office and he's yeah. just like 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 using the f word every other word and i remember feeling like really uncomfortable about it <laughs> really at the time yeah like out of, of uh, all things i guess do you have, that do you that have was to use all that cool. language yeah yeah just like that much yeah it's a lot I, guess. I agree it was anyway um at one point we were reading through a magazine um so it's interesting if ssx3 here for as much as I loved the first SSX, I never really checked out the sequels. You and you still have you still not? Um, I don't think so. I mean, maybe for a couple SSX, minutes or something. But I mean, even SSX just from the screenshots, this looks awesome. Easily the best game in the series. And perhaps more importantly, it's on Xbox, which means that. Oh, it's it's it'll look it's, better if you have an Xbox. If you have an Xbox One, it has it like. It, you can play oh. it in 4K. It has like I a don't 4K have an mode. X, I don't have an Xbox One. I have an original Xbox. That's the only. Yeah, one. SSX3 the is the only Xbox like, I have. It is the 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 big thing is that it uses like it streams like the whole uh, mountain. So you could you can ride from the very top of the mountain to the down to the very bottom if you wanted to. That sounds and pretty it, like, cool. Never stops. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Is it is when I first moved to New York. Uh, oh, that's true. I. I I brought. I only had my Game Boy for a while, but then I made a trip home and and uh, I got my PS2 and brought it back, and that was the only game that I brought with it. Yeah. And I like 
I played basically SSX three like yeah, and nothing else for months. Yeah, no, I I mean I should check it out. I mean it's easy enough for me to yeah. load it on. I mean my my Xbox is modded, so it's easy enough for me to copy it over. Uh, Mike McFly brings up a good point. He said the nude. I don't think it's karate. I think that's Tai Chi. The yeah. the nude karate in Die Hard two is hard to watch. It, and that's a uh, uh, death. From from the Bill and Ted movies. Uh, yep, know. yep, that's yep. Uh, but yeah, I think that's I think that's Tai Chi. I'm not sure. Uh, Colonel Stewart was the was the character's name. Colonel Stewart. Oh right, right. Because then there was also General Grant, and um, that was that was uh, Cleo McDowell from Coming to America. You know that that is one of two movies that like made me so like really afraid of. Of flying, as well. Coming to America? Like just, no, no, no. Die Hard Two. Oh, hmm. Like, because I just I hated planes. It was like that movie and the movie Alive, oh, like really messed up, like made flying hard for me. I mean, I feel like in the eighties, like I would see often enough, like the whole that you'd see on the news that like some plane got hijacked or something by like you know, yeah, Libyans or like. You know, like the Lockerbie bombing. No, I'm not even making a joke. I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, like no, I, I that kind of stuff legitimately made me afraid of. Like, I don't, like, I don't. The first time I flew on a plane, I think I was already graduated from college. But, um, but like when I was a kid, it's like I don't want to get on a plane. Like, I didn't think I was missing out on anything because, like, do you watch the CBS News? Like, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, hey, do you remember these game screens? I remember them selling these. I at, do. Uh, yeah. At game, well, they sold them everywhere. Best Buy, E Toys, Fi, Game Crazy. That's your place. GameStop, KB <laughs> Toys, Media Play, Sam Goody, Sears, R Zone at Toys R Us and Toys R Us dot com. Um, media Play. I see on there too. I said Media Play. I know. I'm just thinking about Media Play. Oh, well, I don't. I, we, I don't I, remember. I don't know Media Play. Maybe we didn't have that around here. I remember going to Media Play and buying the movie X Men on on DVD for thirty five dollars. It's a lot. Is that <laughs> that sounds similar? Is that like Suncoast? Like I don't know if we. You oh had yeah, that. I mean, we're all it's like if you want to go never... anywhere and pay like fifty percent more for a movie, like you go to Suncoast. Yeah, you you pay the like actual full on. Yeah, they had cool posters like, though. You could go in there posters. and get like you know theatrical replicas, you know, but like theatrical posters and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there's one in Buffalo. Yeah. Too. But those those game screens, it's something that uh, a lot of people ask us about about the game screens. Do you have any? I, the only thing I have that's comparable no, is no, no. I have the PS1 screen, but of course that was official. Right, exactly. That's why I'm... I mean, I would love to get one of those PS1 screens just because people ask yeah. us about them all the time. Like, ask you and what? I don't know. Like, uh, how are they a... Like, how are they compared to... They're all right. Know, like, how do they look? They're yeah, okay, I not mean, great. Yeah. I'm sure these are the same way. Yeah. It's like it's just riding on that same same thing. I wonder But if I mean a PS one is very small, right? So it's like it makes more sense to have the right. screen with that. Like who wants to have to like lug around their Xbox and have a little screen? Like, who was really doing that, I wonder? Nobody. Maybe not. I'd, I'd I'd be curious to meet somebody who actually actively did that. I mean, hey, maybe somebody's oh. got some cool story about you know they had some application for for having one of those screens. Uh, brute force brute for the Xbox. What do you know about? Uh, ed- uh, educate force, the remember, folks at home about about brute force. <laughs> I remember brute force uh, being touted as the Halo killer wow. at the time. You know, because you know everything that's po- like popular, like there's always got to be like some game out to kill it. You know, there's, like yeah. that was the thing at the time, like the Halo killer. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like, funny. Like, I mentioned the, that like, in, like, in the the PlayStation in 1995 video that might be done someday. Is uh, that's what um, Battle Arena Toshinden was billed as? Like, oh, it's the Virtua, Virtua Fighter, Fighter killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, the the one thing that I think is consistently true is none of the killers are ever no. the killers. No, because if they were, they wouldn't have to say it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But but brute force was the Halo killer. You know, even though it's on the same system. Yeah. It, which is is a weird thing to say. I would know? say that probably uh, Halo Two was kind of a Halo killer. 
you know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I over on the um, that'd be weird PSU, if like they like, if oh, they did they're... that kind of marketing thing, like if Microsoft had built Halo Two as a Halo killer, that would have been funny because it's kind of meta, it, it, you know. That that would be very funny. Yeah, but the, it, it, you know, I remember on the the PS Two, uh, Killzone was supposed to be the Halo killer. Yeah, and of course it never was. Uh, but brute force was interesting because they had four characters and you could switch between them at any time. So like, it was just like, that was, you could play like four player split screen. Everybody played as a different character. Yeah. So you had like the sniper, the, uh, the shock trooper and like that lizard guy who could do all this stuff. And it like the game, I, I, you know, I got it at, at goodwill. Hey, speaking of shock yeah. troopers, mm-hmm. I just sold my copy of shock troopers. No, really? Yeah. Sold it I, to Alex from Retro Game Squad. Really? Yeah. Why? I feel like that's the best game on the Neo Geo. Nah, I got a Mister Man. Yeah. Still. I got a Mister. I got. I, mean, I got the Mister Cade. I'm just like Neo Geo cartridges are humongous. Like I'm, I'm selling yeah. like eighty percent of my Neo Geo cartridges, and and I had to pay Voltar, so I, you know. Yeah, I mean, I only have a, I don't have very many Neo Geo games, but that was the first one I bought because it's just, I think it's the best game on the system. I mean, I lost my butt in the stock market. So I gotta, I gotta liquidate some assets. <laughs> uh, yeah, are, are I you, sold him shock. Are you shock, in any different any shock like, troopers any and league bowling? Uh, no, no crypto. I've been watching my uh, my crypto account slowly like rise over. I like, should have bought the doggy year. coin or whatever. Like I thought that it was just. Because it shot up all of a sudden, and I thought, like, oh, that's just because of, like, the Reddit. Like, now all of a mm-hmm. sudden everybody on Reddit's into, into investing. And then, sure enough, it came back down. But then it went back up even higher and has stayed there. So, like, if I had taken all the money I put into, like, the, you know, junk stocks that I did, if I put that into doggy yeah. coin or whatever. What is it at now? I thought it was even that high. It was, like less than a dollar per one or something like that right well i think it's like six cents but it was like 0.6 cents or something like that uh, like it's 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 gone up by like like you know 10 times or something like that yeah uh dynasty warriors four um i don't know i already said this last last month but my only thing with dynasty warriors is like i said uh, dynasty warriors 2 was almost the game that i got at the ps2 launch like uh getting ssx was literally like we went for whatever reason we went to Best Buy like I forgot what the launch date is of the PS2 but whatever it is like literally the day before for whatever reason uh a lot of stores were selling the games like you could go to like KB Toys or or Best Buy or whatever and you could buy PS2 games and uh so I like we bought our games and I decided like, okay, I'm going to buy asset. Like, it, which is funny because we didn't even know for sure that we were going to get systems. Cause it wasn't a pre-order thing. We were going to go wait in line, but it was like, well, at least this way we can, we can buy the game and like open it and like look at the manual and stuff while we wait, you know, until, right. until tomorrow to get our system. And like, for whatever reason, it was like at the last minute I decided like, I'm going to get SSX instead of dynasty warriors too. Probably cause choice. I'm guessing PSM was probably hyping the game up, you know, rightfully so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, Great Escape. Uh, oh, Crimson Skies. Remember Crimson Skies oh. for the uh, yeah. Xbox? That was a pretty popular game. It's a good game. Because you, you could play that, like, online multiplayer, right? Wasn't that kind of yeah, like the but cool I mean, thing with like that the, game? It just has a kind of a cool look to it, you know? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's like it's like a high adventure, like steampunk type thing. Yeah. Like weird look, cool looking planes and stuff. Honestly, this is like one of the games that, you know, would make me back then look at the Xbox and think like maybe I made the wrong choice, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny, somebody, because it was last month during me doing my Video Game History Foundation, uh, you know, subscription thing that, you know, I mentioned that. I kind of wish I'd gotten an Xbox instead of a PS2 back then. And like somebody like subsequently messaged me to tell me that, you know, they thought that was because you, I think I, when I said that you were kind of like shocked by it or whatever, but um, like that, that person, I guess agreed. Um, 
Oh, if you want to join the Navy. Remember, Navy Accelerate accelerate Your Life. Uh, forgot what was... They always had like a slogan to try to get you to join the Navy. I forgot what it was before Accelerate Your Life. It wasn't like be the best you can be, right? That was No, I think that the was Army. the Army. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's not a job. It's an adventure. That's what That's it was. That's right. Because I remember, you ever seen that movie Under Siege? The Steven Seagal movie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he, he mentions that. That's another one I used to have my, my kid that, watch. That's probably like a guilty. If you, I mean, I don't feel guilty about much of anything in life at this point. But that's if you want to say like guilty pleasure movie, like I'm not even, yeah. I'm not really into Steven Seagal like at all. But uh, no. like I'll watch I mean, Under take, Siege any day. Yeah, I, Under Siege is pretty good. It has Tammy Lee Jones in it too. Yeah, right? it's yeah, it's it's got a pretty good cast actually, considering that it's just a bad Steven Seagal movie. But uh, oh man, I could be on a bunch of little ones here. But anything Big here? You what? It was a really good cake scene. Yeah, I yeah I know what you're talking about. Hey, don't get dirty. Go get dirty on your own show. Um, anything here stand out? You got uh, Street Racing Syndicate for the Xbox, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg for GameCube. Oh, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. A lot of people will say that that's like the last good game that Yuji Naka made. Oh wow. I, I've downloaded the demo to his upcoming game. Yeah, I, I've, developed I've, I've not played it yet. I heard it's, it's not great. That's too bad. Uh, oh, Dead Dead Man's Hand. This looks kind of it looks kind of like uh, reminiscent to like Red Dead Revolver, you know? Yeah. It's like a it's like a first person shooter or something. It appears to be. Too. It appears to be like in the old west. Yeah, it says if today's tribulations aren't wild enough for you. Take a ride back to the Old West, where gunslinging, saloon card games, and bar fights were the norm. Developed by Human Head. Are you familiar with the developer, uh, Human Head? No. <laughs> no. Makes me think of, uh, remember remember uh, Liquid Television on yeah. MTV? Yeah. Remember the head? Yeah. The guy who had, like, the alien in his head? Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember the head detective on *In Living Color*? No. Do you remember Herman Herman's head on *Fox*? Herman's head. I know that name. All right. Do you remember Max Headroom? Yes. All right. I remember him. At least we have something. Uh, Alias. Uh, did you ever watch that show, Alias? I never really no. watched that show. Jennifer Garner, you know, who is now. Yeah, I, I think I don't know. Uh, I talk, I don't know if I talked to a, I've talked about her in. Oh boy. In in one of our streams, or if I talked about it somewhere else. But I mean, like one of my guilty pleasures is oh. the movie that she was in called Thirteen Going on Thirty. Oh, I don't. Know. Has uh, has Mark Ruffalo in it? This sounds well. familiar. I think maybe we did talk about this. I think we brought it up before. But... Uh, oh, hey, what about Happy Gilmore? Happy Gilmore. What, what's your position on Happy Gilmore? Because it was trending on Twitter today. Yeah, because I saw... Today uh, would be Dan like... The, did, did the did the swing, the golf swing, right? Yeah, but I think the reason he did it is like today Today is like the... Fic, years. Yeah, the fictional date or whatever of, of the golf tournament in the movie. Like, I love uh, uh, Happy yeah. Gilmore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it was good. I, I was not a big... Big fan of uh, Adam Sandler early on, early on. Yeah, I liked certain things, but I, I came to like him over time, I guess. But uh -huh. I definitely liked. I saw Happy Gilmore in, in the theater. Yeah, and uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Yeah, same here. I I, I would like to um, watch it again. Oh, and there's Freaky yeah. Flyers. We already saw the ad for Freaky Flyers and Sphinx and the Shadow of Set. I, I know, know. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's some YouTube videos of people reviewing that. Oh, well, I mean, there's YouTube videos of people reviewing everything. But uh, Harry <laughs> Harry Potter uh, Quidditch World Cup. Yeah. I don't know. I've I never mean, seen any of the Harry Potter movies. So real? That's surprising. Really? I mean, they're they're pretty good. I mean, they're 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 decent. Oh, I'm not saying they're not. I just never seen any. I of mean, them. I would. I I like them enough to watch them all once. Yeah. I guess. I've never seen him more than once. I do see the Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3 Rebel Strike, though. 
It looks pretty which, cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, have you did you play Rogue Squadron or Rogue Squadron Two? It was like a no. launch game on. on no, because I didn't have a GameCube back then. Uh well, if if you ever or at least not have a until... chance to, to play it, yeah, you should because it's amazing how good looking that game is. Yeah, I mean, and it, it looks was a launch good game, the... and they made it in like five months. They made it in like five months. These screenshots look like, really good. Wow, well, developed yeah, well, by Factor is... Five. Yeah, yeah, they did all three of them. Yeah, they but uh, this one was not so good because they put the added these on foot segments that are just like like half baked, like they're just not. There's nothing about them that works. Yeah, uh, but but if you if you have a chance to play any of them, you should definitely play the second one because yeah the the last level in the second one is like the like the assault on the second Death Star and it like recreates Return of the Jedi like so perfectly. That'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, I bet I would like it because like uh, X-Wing for the PC is like one of my all-time favorite games. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I would enjoy it. Uh, But hey, you have a GameCube now, don't you? No, I don't have a GameCube. But I I mean, I have a Wii so I can play GameCube games, but. Okay. I'd 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 like to get a GameCube just so, you know, because I could pick up, um, Whatever that thing is that Insurrection Industries makes, the Carby. Oh yeah. Well, I guess now there's other options, right? But I see Mike McFly talking I like about that F-Zero guy, so. GX is such a fun game. Well, F-Zero, I'm, F-Zero, I'm, yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to move in that. Too? I'm trying to move in that direction, but you know you're pretty hung up. Oh, on. oh, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't realize that it was right up there. It's right. Oh, look, I'm gonna. Boom. Yeah, there it is. F Zero GX is. Uh, it's amazing. It is so good. Yeah. That the, the reason they have not made a follow up to it because I don't think they they know that they can't top it. And you know what it is? You know it took it took it took Sega to make an F Zero game to make a perfect F Zero game. What's Sega for you? You know. Yeah. No, it is. If you if you've never played that, I've played. I mean, that. it is. I, th- I had. I think this yeah. is one of the games I picked up. When I got uh, the only YouTube, the so. only doubt pro- only problem with the entire game is that the story mode is ridiculously difficult. Yeah, that it's like not even fun to play. Hmm. But there's like so many characters, and I love how all the characters have like their own theme song. Yeah, if you if you go to like the uh, the bio screen, some of like a lot of those theme songs have like lyrics to them. Yeah, it's amazing. That would be cool. Uh, Rogue Ops. Mm. Is that yeah. like that reminds me? Oh, no, this is a Tom Clancy game. Never mind. Wait, is it? Oh, yeah, Tom Clancy game. It just reminds me. I, I think I mentioned this last time, but it reminds me of those like $9.99 PlayStation games you could get. Oh, spe- that was Spec Ops. Spec Ops Stealth Elite. It's like a $10 PlayStation game, brand new. Uh, PN03. P- yeah. That's, that's one of the Capcom. Like Capcom Five, as they called them at the time, is like all these supposedly at the time exclusive Capcom games coming out on the on the GameCube. Yeah. And Piano Three, like I, that game has like a serious fixation on the main character's butt. Yeah. Because she like dances and and shakes her shakes her butt when she shoots all the time. Oh, that's probably your kind of game then, right? Because you said you were kind of a yeah. butt, more of a butt guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's the only reason I own the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of sugar on that guy's brain flakes. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's probably that's not, how I eat mine. Probably not good for you. Uh, hey, wow. Check that out. Ad for Mad Magazine. Oh. So, what was the, what was the, I always wonder what the difference was between Mad and Cracked. Cracked sucks. Is, is Cracked. That's that's the oh, difference. But they but they were like the same. Were they not owned by the same company? Right? They were competing magazines. I don't. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that was my impression when I was a kid. Because like, I remember when like Don Martin like left Mad Magazine and went to Cracked, and it was like a huge deal. Because he was like defecting to the dark side. But um, I I never got into Cracked, but I was a huge fan of Mad. Like I would buy Mad Magazine. That's kind of we go to the grocery store, and I would get my parents to buy me, you know, whatever the latest issue of Mad Magazine was, and 
Uh, what's like what's the ma- what's the mascot's name? Like that kid, Alfred E. Newman. That's his name, Alfred, Alfred, Alfred e. e. Newman. Okay. Yeah. Is that like supposed to mean something? I don't think so. It's just, like, it's it's just the mascot. Always, I feel like it always looked really creepy. Oh, for sure. Here we can. I guess that's. There's that's one right the there. If you want to get in a little bit yeah, tighter. So that's that's Alfred E. Newman right there. I forgot. I, I read one time the history of of like his look. It was based. I think it was based on like a doll or something that the the uh, artist found. You know. But um, yeah, I was actually bummed out. Like Mad Magazine, like kind of went away uh, not too yeah. long ago, um, and now they just release like special issues or whatever. But. Uh, it's no longer a monthly magazine. Like when I was a kid, Mad didn't even have uh, ads in it. So really, mm-hmm. like they just between like subscribers and like newsstand, or whatever, they made enough money that they didn't have any ads in there at all. And like I remember, and it's the kind of thing I never noticed when I was a kid. Like I was, I wasn't like, oh, look at how there's no ads. But then like later on in life, like you know, when I was maybe in my twenties or something, I picked up a copy of Mad. And it had ads, and then you notice because, like, all of a sudden there's ads, you know? And looking back, it's pretty impressive that they didn't have them. Oh, for sure. Uh, Here's a kickboxing game for the PS2, K1 World Grand Prix. So Awesome. Yeah. Uh, And then uh, Bloody Roar Extreme and uh, Ape Escape 2. Ape Escape, you mean? Sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, Ape Escape Due. Uh, Josh is probably not even here anymore <laughs> to appreciate our humor. Uh, hey, there's Mario Kart uh, Double Dash. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I never really... I have it, but I just got it at Goodwill. I haven't I played it very much. I think I, I think I have it. Pretty sure I have it. I don't know. I like it. Uh, it's not my favorite it look, it looks Mario Kart game, but screenshots. I think it's pretty impressive when you play it. I mean, visually. Yeah. I mean, visually. that's a big jump from Mario Kart 64. Yeah. I mean, going from like Mario Kart to Mario Kart 64 to this, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Uh, another Ghost Recon or another Tom Clancy game, Ghost Recon oh, yeah. Island Thunder. I like the original Ghost Recon. Uh, Sega downhill GTA. domination. What? Where, oh, there it is. Yeah, downhill domination. Uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like Rotor Rash. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It looks kind of neat. Like it, it probably sucks. Let's be honest. But like, no, 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 no. It's it's actually pretty good. It's oh, really? The people who made. I think it's made by. It looks. Uh, it's it made by Incog. It says. Yeah, yeah. It's the people who made. Um, it looks neat. Of metal to me. Really. Yeah. Incog. Yeah, I'm pretty like Incognito games or something oh. like that they became i'm pretty sure they made that and they made uh what is that war of the monsters or something like that yeah oh yeah uh, yeah somebody worst of blood or whatever says sega gt online aka the game that came bundled with jet set radio future that's like the the most common way to see that is is in that that uh two pack yeah uh is play smart maximize uh, your yes, video sir. gaming fun make the right purchasing choices by knowing exactly what kind of content is inside you is this even like oh, it's like an esrb thing yeah yeah so who cares uh playstation 2 oh resident evil dead aim i thought this yeah. game was supposed to suck i think i'm thinking of a ps1 wasn't there a ps1 like first person resident evil game that's that, like was, that really was Gun crappy. Survivor, I think. I don't know. Gun Survivor? That doesn't sound right, but... I don't know. Or maybe Dead I'm, Aim, I think, is, is maybe the... Maybe I'm thinking of something like else. The, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, Dead Aim is supposed to be pretty good. I have that one, because it uses the Gun Con 2. <sighs> and I think the Gun Con 2 is probably the best light gun of all time. Yeah? It's I just really... It's, I don't believe that I have me, It's really, really fun to use. Yeah. I have a Gun Con 1. But I don't believe I have a gun con too. You should if you get a chance to get a gun con too, you should because it's just it's just like it's smaller. Yeah. 
Uh, but it has like a D pad on the oh, wow. on the back of it, and mm-hmm. yeah, my favorite thing is that you can. Uh, it has a button, like a reload button on the bottom of the the grip. Oh, so you can like, you can, like hold it. And it's like like oh, that's know, kinda, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like putting it like a new clip in in the gun. You should get one. I mean, they're well. They're if I run across cheap. one, I mean, I don't ever go to video and game stores anymore. So grab grab um, a copy of. Uh, Time Crisis 2 and 3. And th- those are amazing yeah. games. Yeah. All right. Oh, what was that Auto Modelista? Hey, we're, we're not on this page yet. Uh, oh, yes. Here's Sorry. Chaos Legion, which, remember, if you like Devil May Cry, you'll love Chaos Legion. But, yeah. Uh, if you like Devil May a, Cry, just play Devil May Cry. Right. Well, it gets a 3. Well, so the, the bigger review here is just the fun factor score. So it's gra- graphic sound control. And uh, here you can. It doesn't even. It's it's written so small. It's hard to see. But uh, yeah. fun factor is three. That's not making me all that excited about playing it. Yeah. Uh, and there's that wakeboarding. Well, that wakeboarding game gets a four, and in control it gets a perfect five. So, could be a cool game. Maybe it's a maybe it's a hidden gem. Uh, and then, yeah, now you want to talk about audio or uh, auto modalista. Whenever I say, I always want to say audio modalista, even though it's auto modally. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those yeah. stupid things. I mean, I don't, those. I've never really played it. I know that it's kind of expensive these days, but it's, you know, it, it's a very impressive looking game. Yeah. Cell shaded, right? Yeah. Or I guess kind of has that cell shaded look. Looks pretty neat. Yeah, I think the GameCube version is the one that's expensive, though, these days. Oh, I see. And then uh, Wolverine's Revenge only gets a 2.5. So if yeah. GamePro gives it a 2.5, you know it's bad. <laughs> uh, oh, here's Wario World, which gets a 4. Yeah, that's a, that's a treasure game. Treasure developed. Uh-oh. Hold on. What? Well, the battery ran out on one light, so now i got to switch over to another one. Uh. So it's really no problem, but... Oh, did you got two of those lights? Oh I'm yeah, man. I guess. Yeah, I mean it, it's um, it's more it's better to have two, I think, just because um, then you can have them set to different uh, colors. Yeah, I, I've I've been contemplating getting a second one for a while. Just just do it. Less yeah. contemplation, more action. See, in, I knew. In terms I knew of that, that I knew that battery wasn't going to make it, so I had the other one sitting here ready to go. I was in the Bo- Cub Scouts. I don't know if you knew that. That's that's like a hundred. Really? Per- that's a hundred percent a Cub Scout move right there. Yeah, it's being prepared. Yeah, well, that's I was I was a Cub Scout too, but you know, it's I don't remember anything from it. I remember uh, going to the weekly meeting or. Not the weekly meetings, but like the monthly, like the den meetings or something. Den meetings, yeah. yeah. I mean, have we did we talk about Weeblos? I feel like we talked about Weeblos previously. We probably did. Yeah. But if you have something to say, I mean, no, no. All right. Weeblos was like before Cub Scouts, right? Is it? That's like I, I just like saying the word Weeblo. Wait. Before Cub Scouts I, or before Boy Scouts? I feel like Weeblos is like a high end Cub Scout. Okay, you, you might be right. Might Before you make the jump to Boy Scout. Right, because the Weeblo is like, is like the bear. is after you get your like bear badge or whatever. I right? think so, right? There's like Bobcat and then bear. So when, and when, like... when your shirt goes from uh, from being blue, yeah, or like navy blue to yeah. brown. I thought that was in Boy Scouts. You think Weeblos have brown shirts? I think so. Maybe they just had a different uh... handkerchief thing. Neck, neck or chip or whatever they're called. Yeah, people in the chat. Yeah, Weeble. It's it's like W E E B L O S, isn't it? Weeblos. Weeblos. Yeah. It's, it's not before a good. Weeblos, it's it's a poor choice before, of words, you know. Weeblos is the last stage before Boy Scouts. See, he knows what's up. I can always count on Cody. <laughs> uh, anyway, hey, over here is another one of these ultimate gaming rig things. Yeah. So. It's still going. It's still <laughs> still ripping people off. Yeah, you know, yeah. Still grifting after uh, ten years after like the magazine that we read 
the other day. Is there a cassette deck in there, though? I can't even tell. Maybe not. You can get no mixtapes for you. Is that, is, that, is that Metroid Prime on there? Uh, it is, right? Isn't Green? it? Yeah, looks like it in the screenshot. Have you played that? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, Metroid Prime is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, which they only give a four. But to be fair, I have not played the Xbox version. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what that's, you know, I got all, you know, kind of snobby about first person shooters. I wanted to use a mouse and keyboard. So I wasn't really going to want to play it on, uh, well, I didn't have an Xbox, but like I, I, for the most part, didn't play first person shooters on the PS2 for the same reason. Like I'd rather use a, uh, mouse and keyboard, but, um, but yeah, you should check out Return to Castle Wolfenstein on the PC. That, that'd be a fun, that'd be a fun game to do a live stream with actually. I know. I think Tri's like a big Wolfenstein fan. Yeah, like he played them all, like all the console versions at least. Yeah, somebody in the chat points out brown shirts probably not the best idea either. And uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, hey, Burnout Two Point of Impact for oh. Xbox. I love the Burnout games. Burnout Three Takedown. Yeah. If I was gonna make a top ten list all time cross platform top 10 favorite games ever. I think I'd have to put Burnout 3 on that list. I I, I have I have the PS2 version. I, I found the I got the PS2 version at, at Goodwill and it's still sealed. Wow. That's pretty cool. Like but that yeah. somebody somewhere down person. the line had hor- horrible taste to not open it <laughs> unless they already had a copy or something, but yeah, um, they may they like were given given it as a gift or yeah, something like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, I don't, I just think, I think that game's awesome. Um, all the burnout <laughs> games are pretty cool. So, uh, it gets 4.5. That's pretty good. And then here's wakeboarding unleashed with Sean Murray, which I don't, didn't we already see? I guess that was the PS2 version. This is the Xbox version. This one only gets a 4.5 in control. So not quite as good or I mean different reviewer, I guess. So. Uh, anything over here? Oh, Evil Dead, A Fistful of Boomstick. Remember that? That was kind of... I just remember it was kind of yeah. cool when that came out, just because at least like when I was in college, like, you know, Evil Dead was... I mean, it still is, right? It's like a... a what do you call that kind of movie? A, a cult, like movie? A cult, well, it's like a, a cult classic. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a cult classic. So but they had like good... A TV show and everything. But that's kind of like, you know, what I was saying about The Great Escape, you know? Like, it's kind of weird that you'd make a movie about The Great Escape, but I don't feel that way about Evil Dead. Like, you know... Right. It's more like about time you made an Evil Dead video game. It's, it's kind of weird because Evil Dead, like, it was it was, like, definitely a failure at that point. And then it had, it like, a cult... Like, it had yeah. a cult follow. Yeah. Like, you know, it's... It's not even based on Evil Dead 2, really. It's like the more like Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. You know, like that that era. Yeah. You know, so, and, and Army of Darkness was like a hugely, like a huge flop. Yeah. When it came out in theaters. You know who I bet would love Evil Dead? Is your kid. Probably. Yeah. Especially, I mean, maybe the first one that kind of just like plays it straight. Like it. No, no, that's what I mean. The first, the, you show them the first one, you know. I just show them the scene where, like. I know what you're going to say. You don't have to say like it. The gets stuck in the. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Star Wars Clone Wars. That's, here's a, here's a Star Wars game that does not get a very good score. It only gets a three for uh, Fun Factor. Yeah. That's too bad. The, cl- the Clone uh, Wars. I think Star Wars Episode Two is the worst one, I think. Really? I have to think about that. What even happened in episode two? Exactly. Yeah. The Clone Wars. Yeah. Um, began. Yeah. Like, I feel like the, the, the prequel trilogy could have been two movies. Like, you could have just made that two movies. Like, I think yeah. it was made a trilogy because it's like, no, well, that's what we do here. We make trilogies. So they had to like right. figure out how to make it a trilogy, but it didn't really need to even be the case. Like, really, it could have been one. 
movie if you really wanted to. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like all, like I can, I can watch the original trilogy over and over and over again. I mean, I just like anytime I could yeah. just like sit down and watch any one of those movies. Yeah. But any, any of the any of the movies outside of those original three, like yeah. I have watched them like once or twice in my life. Yeah. Or maybe I will watch like a part of it for some reason here and mm-hmm. there, but I've never sat through and watched uh, any of those movies again in one sitting. Yeah. Except for the time I saw them in the theater. It's probably a good decision. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I can I can watch the original trilogy just over and over again. They they just they never get old to me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Madden NFL two thousand and four. Um, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> Inside Pitch two thousand and three. I never heard of that. It's just like another one of those when. But is is this like a sim like style a game, or is this more like a like an arcade style baseball game? Oh, well, that's definitely like like a real one, oh, like okay. a sim. There's no more. Isn't that no more Garcia Para? It's quite the name. I don't know. It's quite the name. Uh, NFL 2K4. Was it? It was NFL uh, 2K5, 2K5 is 5. the one that's like that's like the best football game ever made. Yeah, and it's like the last one that mm-hmm. visual concepts. Yeah. You know. So this is the one. Visual concepts that. was like splitting their time between making. Uh, sports games and uh, Floygan Brothers on the Dreamcast. I think that's they'll always be the developer Floygan Brothers to me. Visual, visual concepts. Yeah. Uh, Mega Man Network. I, I, I like to say the what? the name Floygan Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mega Man Network Transmission. This is another one. Like, I would go into like a GameStop or something, and I would just see the Mega Man name on something, and be like, "Ooh, what's that?" And then you'd look yeah. at it and be like, "Oh, never mind." I'm gonna yeah. Go get a burrito or something. I mean, it's, go it's, home. it has kind of a cel shaded look to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know anything really, about really it. But, though. Yeah. Unlike all the other Mega Man games. Uh, NC. Oh, this was like wasn't this like a big deal on social media a week or two ago? Like, I'm just saying that because NCAA football 2004 is in here, like, because they're finally going to make a new. I don't know if this one was the last one, but no, this couldn't have been because the last one was on Xbox 360 because that was like the whole thing on like okay Twitter was like oh I still have my Xbox 360 like just so that I can play you know NCAA like 2006 or something like that. So I guess. Yeah, I don't. I don't really get it. Like, just play college Madden players or something. Two thousand six. Like, yeah, I don't. Well, they they but they can't even put the names of the college players, can they? Like, they're all so. just like numbers because you know the, you know, college kids aren't allowed they're to allowed make to money or, or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I to be fair, I haven't played the game. Maybe it's like a super good uh, football game. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, Cody, man, I got I just got to give a quick shout out here to Cody Sandusky because he's just he's been bringing the facts like all night long. Like anything exactly. we don't we, anything we, we any don't know, like he's on it. He will answer it. He says NCAA impressed. football 14 was the last one. So and he says it's a large it's large part of the reason my PS3 still gets heavy play. So there you go. I mean, it must be uh, I was going to say it must be a good game. But I think also if you live in certain parts of this country where um what happened to your? Did we lose Corey? It just I happened again. I don't know why. No. Okay, did you lose me? Uh, your video's kind of frozen. I don't understand um, why. Like that keeps on happening. I don't know. I was just gonna say, like, you know, there are parts of this country, like, like maybe video. like Alabama or something, where like, you know, I think University of Alabama football is like a much bigger deal than like NFL, right? So if you're if you're like. Someone who's like a fan, you know, if you're like an Alabama football fan, you're going to be a lot more excited to be playing an NCAA game than you are to be playing like a Madden game. That would just be like my guess. Like my next door neighbor went to Alabama, and so he's like a huge fan of Alabama football, and he doesn't really, like as far as NFL goes, he could take it or leave it. Uh, Oh, and then here's that inside pitch, which uh, once again, uh, Cody... uh, yeah. Uh, said is uh, is a sim game. Oh, I see. 
Um, all right, that's it for sports. There you go. Oh, here, uh, Ark the Lad, Twilight of the Spirits. Yeah, I. I mean, I bought that. I'm a big Ark the Lad fan. Yeah, do you have you have the little the box set for PS One? Nice. I have all of them. It's, I guess I don't have the. I think there's a Wonder Swan game that I have never played. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a pretty good one. Yeah, they yeah, give it a three point five. Well, they're they're wrong. Well, yeah, say so maybe one of the maybe things I remember when that came out. Dumb. I remember that was the first game that I bought when uh, Sony made this conscious decision, like at this point in the PS2's life. Yeah. That all of their new release games, that all of the first party games that they released were going to be thirty nine ninety nine. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, and that was that was. That was the first one that was that price. Uh, at least the that I bought. Uh, and then over on this side is uh, Unlimited Saga, which only gets a two point five. So that's pretty poor. Yeah. Um, but Fantasy Star Online Episode One and Two gets uh, a four. So I've never played uh, Fantasy Star Online. So uh, it was it was. If you played it at the time, I think it was, it was something you definitely remember. I mean, it. I think that. Uh, I think it's one of those. Games, I, I wish I gamer did a video about it. Oh yeah, know, I'm, I, I I'm played sure it too. I mean, I put like. I wish I had. Hours in it. it was cool. It was. It was. It was just really fun. I played like with a lot of people from the uh, the game fan tavern. Yeah. Uh, IRC chat room. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, here on the next page is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. It's kind of like what I was saying about um, Mega Man. Like anytime I would go to like uh, GameStop, like after I got a, a GameCube, I would always check this game out because like I was you know pretty big into Final Fantasy. Like like I loved seven and nine and like ten I didn't like really, but just you know if you saw the Final Fantasy name on something because like you know. Like I said this before, but like I picked up like all of the like anthology collections on the yeah. PS One. Like there was Final Fantasy Chronicles anthology, and then there was one other one, Origins. And um, so, like if I just if I saw Final Fantasy on something, I you know, and so I was always really tempted to get Crystal Chronicles, even though like even just looking at the screenshots in the back of the box, I'm like well, this doesn't really look like a standard Final Fantasy game, but. Um, I never bought it, but I was always really tempted by it. <laughs> and then I don't know this Pirates of the Caribbean game down here. Is this? I mean, we're in the we're in the role playing game section. So I don't was that yeah. a role playing game? Because I mean that yeah that I actually mean, makes it I, seem a little bit cooler. Like right, right. Well, I mean it, it's a Bethesda. I mean that's basically Bethesda was mainly known for doing RPGs yeah. for the longest time, I guess. But I mean, I don't. I mean, maybe it sucks, but I mean, also could have been pretty cool. Um, and then here's the game. I think I still have this game, and I've never played it. This is Baldur's Gate: Dark Alliance Two. Oh, which isn't this game kind of expensive, or is it only expensive on one of the consoles it came out on? I, th I, it might be expensive on everything, but I never played the second one. Me either. I bought the first one, and like when it came out, and I played it quite a bit, and I really liked it. Um, I think I might have the second one now. I have but the I second one. I just don't think I've played it. I th I I remember John Linneman telling me that Dark Alliance Two does some like crazy graphical trick. Really? Uh, that yeah, is really impressive at, at, for the time. I don't remember what it was, but the thing I remember from the game so much is that it had the craziest looking water. Yeah, like. Like in a good way, like cool water effects, or yeah, oh yeah. I mean, at the time, it was I'd never seen anything like it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then down here is uh, Morrowind Game of the Year edition for uh, for uh. the Xbox. So, a lot of people say that Morrowind was like the last really good Elder Scrolls game. I guess a lot of people don't like Oblivion or Skyrim. I enjoyed both of them. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I've not played. I've I have many versions of Skyrim, but I've never played it. Oh man! Like I don't, I can't think of any other game off the top of my head where it's like, if I even start playing like Oblivion or Skyrim, 
Like, I'll look at the clock and it'll be like one in the afternoon. And then like five minutes later, I'll look at the clock again and it's like 6 p.m. <laughs> like, I just, like, I, you know, I'll hear other people talk about, like, I remember even like one time Bithead was talking about like the first time he ever played Image Fight. And like, yeah. you know, he looked at the clock and like four hours had gone by and he didn't even notice, you know? And like, <laughs> like that's me with like any of the, like you just, I completely lose any sense of time. Uh, when I'm playing, but I'm not complaining. I mean, to me, that's like cool. Right, know? right. Like I love those games. I wish they would make another one. You know, like a the next one in the series. You know, that's the kind of thing that like might actually, if it didn't come out for a computer, which it would, because now now Microsoft owns Bethesda, right? So I can't imagine them right. making a game and not like simultaneously releasing it on PC and on whatever the new Xbox is called. But yeah. Um, but even if, if it was if it was like a console exclusive, like that might get me to buy like a new Xbox. You know, if there was like, you know, Elder Scrolls, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. You know what I can't wait to play when it gets I'll get a, a Xbox port is that that new fl uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I almost got it. But then I saw that it's like 105 gigabytes. Yeah. You know, like you, pretty much you have to like dedicate like a like a SSD or something on your computer to it. But it it <laughs> looks much. it looks so cool. Like, and I, I tweeted about it, like, oh, I'm thinking about buying this game. And then Modern Vintage Gamer would he, like he replied and was like, I oh, just get Game Pass because like oh, I don't know if that. that promotion is still going on, but Game Pass was like 99 cents for the first month. And yeah. uh, Flight Simulator is one of the games you get with Game Pass. And I was like, oh, I'll do it. But then I saw that it's like a 105 gigabyte download, which is like, I, how many days would that take to download, you know? If you don't have a, a bandwidth cap or like a data cap, I don't, then I don't think I do. do it like a, like a day or two, probably. Yeah. Like let it go. Yeah. I can't um, wait. I, I, will, I will definitely buy the... Xbox version when it releases. Yeah. Uh, strategy guide, I don't... I mean, I usually kind of skip through the strategy guides just because yeah. like, what is there to really talk about? I mean... Not big, not big Splinter Cell fan. Yeah, that's not helping either. Uh, codes, man, they still got some game codes. That's that's cool. I, I mean, do they still have them today? I, I just always feel like game codes are like a relic of the past. I don't think so. Okay, that's too bad. Uh, Def Jam... No, Van they, they know they're going to sell it to you. It's true. Yeah. Uh, you ever played uh, Def Jam Vendetta? No. No? Okay. Vendetta? No. Yeah, Vendetta. Uh, Amplitude. Amplitude looks kind of cool. Oh, it's like... That's by... It's like the pre... Uh, Guitar Hero? Guitar Hero. Yeah. Yeah. It was by uh, Harmonix, I think. Oh, there's Midnight Club too. We were talking or about. Or maybe Midnight I might be Club. thinking ampl I might be thinking of Frequency actually. I don't know if Amplitude and Fre Frequency are the same. Wouldn't people. it seem like it? You know, just sounds it like it. Like... Yeah, I have Frequency. I'm not right. sure. Well, Papa Nebdoza says Amplitude is awesome, so I believe him. Uh, MLB Slugfest. Slugfest is the, the arcade uh, style one, right? Right. That's yeah. that's the NBA Jam. Yeah. Or NFL Blitz. Yeah. Uh, State of Emergency. I remember when that game came out, but I didn't. Uh, it was like, everyone was like, oh, because yeah. that was Rockstar's big yeah. game that followed up on GTA 3. And yep. That's not good. Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Uh, oh, speaking of Happy Meals, here's a, a Super Monkey Ball slash Sonic the Hedgehog Happy Meal. That's kind of cool. Sega themed Happy Meal. It's funny. I was just yeah. thinking about that. I didn't say anything about it on social media because I'm not trying to get all involved in drama or whatever. But like, because I, I think Voltar was like commenting on, you know, right, like all these adults going and buying like 30 Happy Meals. And I was just thinking, like, you know, when I was like 11 years old or something. Do you remember the cha Changeables? They were um, yeah. like it was a Happy Meal toy, but it was like fries or like a burger or oh and they turn into like robots or whatever yeah yeah like i, I love I those they're called changeables yeah yeah I had the fries one yeah and like i remember thinking that those things were so cool and uh you know like yeah. i would go get 
Because even like I was 11 or 12, and at that point, like maybe a Happy Meal is not super filling, you know? Like maybe yeah. it's maybe I'd gotten to, you know, quarter pounder with cheese kind of age or whatever. But, um, but I would get a Happy Meal just because I wanted the changeables, you know? And like for me, that's like one of my sort of like cherished childhood memories. And I just, I can't even imagine growing up in a time where like, like my grandma took me to McDonald's, but they were all out of Happy Meals because like a bunch of adults bought them all, you know. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I've I know I've complained about this plenty already about like you know resellers and stuff like that, but it's just like you know, it's one thing to go wait outside in line, you know, to buy up all of the record store day exclusives or something, and then you're just like mm-hmm. screwing other adults, but like. I don't know. Buying like, all the Happy Meals. Yeah, or like you remember when Soup, it was Super Mario Brothers cereal came out a few years ago, and it was like something about the box you could like scan. What's the thing on the bottom of the Amiibos or something? Like it had like an Amiibo code. Oh yeah, or like an NFC or whatever it is. Nice. Yeah, and like I think adults were like taking their switches to like Target and like scanning them all, and so then like some kid would like buy the box of cereal and it like. They couldn't get the wouldn't, code. Wouldn't it, be able to do that. Yeah. Or wouldn't be able to do anything with that. Yeah. I mean, my my kids love to get Happy Meals. And the toys and stuff you get with Happy Meals now are like, yeah, they're just like, like crap. But, yeah. you know, like if, if I worked at McDonald's, I'll tell you one thing I would do if I worked at McDonald's. Yeah. I, I don't know if the, if they have any control over it. I would eat a lot of McDonald's if I worked at McDonald's, and I would never yeah. and I would never get tired of it. But it, it always feels like if if you are if you got a, a, a an order in, yeah, I would I would go out of my way to make sure that if somebody ordered two Happy Meals, that they both had different toys in them. Really. You're just because you're all just such a all good that person. happens now is a scene. I mean, like different characters or something like that. Yeah, I think that uh, it what happens all the time when we go is that um, they both get the exact same toy, and it's oh. kind of like not yeah. not very fun. And then we I always we always end up with one of them like not even open even open. It's like yeah. what do you do with it at that point? I mean, you can't like nobody wants to like donate like McDonald's toys, the goodwill or anything like that. You don't want to like throw them out either, but they're just like in the package. It's like, so we just like are saving them. Eventually we'll yeah. be able to give to somebody. What would you do if you worked at McDonald's and like, some, I would make sure that I, if some dude with an anime t-shirt came in there and bought like 30 happy meals. I probably have to do my job. There's nothing you can do about it. You know? Yeah. Just give them a dirty But I look. would, um, I don't know. I would uh, only put Pokemon cards in one of them, I guess. I'd lose my job. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yep, that's it for Happy Meals. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Red Faction 2. Remember, Red Faction was kind of a... Yeah, because you can destroy Semi. the environment. Yeah. That was the big thing. They, there's been several Red Faction games. Like, Next issue of... Uh, there is, what do you got? What? There's, there's Red Faction Remastered. Yeah. That's the most recent one. Ooh, is that Niobe from The Matrix? The Matrix Reloaded? I have no idea. All I know is that this would have been a cooler issue of GamePro to have because it covered E3 that year. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Remember the the Matrix? Did you see the Matrix? Uh, the sequels in the I've theater. S- uh, I didn't see them. In the, I only saw the first Matrix in the theater, but I did see the mm-hmm. sequels. But I saw them like later. Yeah. Like I was I never see. interested, and then at some point I watched them, and like they were all right, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, and then the last page here, uh, we've got Rumble Nintendo Don't, the G three oh, wireless, wireless controller. From Pelican. That's like, another company. Like, if I saw Pelican on anything, I was like, yeah, that's probably not good. Yeah, it's like Pelican or Interact. Yeah. And then... Or Mad uh, Cats. 
the Italian job. There's another one that's like. But didn't they? Yeah, re- I guess it was. Uh, didn't they remake, remake this movie? Time. Yeah. But it's like a weird, a weird uh, game to make or a weird movie to make a game on. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. I mean, if just with all the. Like we just need to make a movie where you drive around Mini Coopers because that that is the movie that really brought Mini Coopers like back. Oh, I remember, Sorry. like 2003, 2004, there was this grad student that I was working with, and um, he bought a Mini Cooper. But he was like, it's yeah. kind of funny, like, one thing I don't, like, generally I don't want, you, you see, like, a lot of people, like, they'll buy a car, and then they have to buy, like, a hat and, like, a jacket and a shirt that have, like, the logo of the car on it. Which I know I'm a total hypocrite considering what sweater I'm wearing right now, but this is literally the only thing I have, you know. But like, like he immediately like had like a Mini Cooper hat that he wore everywhere, and I was just like, "Yeah, dude, you're lame. He's living a life now. Yeah, I, I guess so. Is, is, is your is your sweatshirt is it a is it a Porsche? Yeah, it's is a Porsche, Porsche on yeah, it. Yeah, it's a Porsche sweatshirt. It's a really comfortable hoodie though. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of like got a bigger collar to it. It kind of. Yeah, well, I like I like to zip it up all the way because I get cold, you know. But this yeah. is like I was just telling my wife this yesterday because like it's fun. Like I literally wear this like every day, you know. Like yeah, and it's starting to get worn out. Like the elbows are starting to get like a little bit thin, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about buying another, another one. I was thinking about buying another one. Yeah, but like I was telling my wife this this is like the the best quality hoodie I've ever owned. Like like you've seen the movie Apollo thirteen, I assume. Yeah. So there's like the scene where like they're they're getting ready to get loaded into the spacecraft, you know, like like they've got all their little people like helping them get into their spacesuits and stuff. And there's like the they, there's that shot of like the spacesuit getting like zipped up, you know, and it's like this big like industrial strength zipper. And that's like the zipper yeah. this thing has. Really? Oh yeah. Well, I it's, it's, so would you say it's. it's the... It's the Porsche of hoodies. It is. It really Porsche is. It really is. <laughs> so, and it's funny because someone in the chat says patch it. And I, yeah, we, we talked about that. We might put like some elbow patches on it or something, but I still want to get, yeah, you I still want to get another one though. I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but you know, have you like just worn that a lot in the, like the last year? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Cause I, I, I have like five sets of clothing that i just like wear every week i've worn like every week in a, in a cycle for yeah. the last year yeah at this point because i'm not gonna like waste my like like nicer stuff yeah if i'm not going anywhere or doing anything yeah i mean i don't know i i mean i'm the same way i guess but for me it's just like all i ever wear is polo shirts you know mm-hmm. like I, that's what i'm wearing right now but i just like and they're all i have this exact same polo shirt in like six or seven different colors. And that's just all like summer or winter. That's the beauty of a polo shirt. In the <laughs> summer, I wear it with shorts. In the winter, I wear it with, you know, with jeans. And, and I, you know, if I'm at home, like I only wear the hoodie at home. If I'm, go- if I'm going out, I put on yeah. like a jacket or something. But that's, I mean, that's literally the only thing that changes about my wardrobe, you know, externally, I should say, every day is like I'm wearing a different colored polo shirt. And like, that's it. Have you, have you always been like a big big polo shirt fan i mean i would say like you know probably since the 90s you know that's when i first started buying polo shirts and like yeah i just don't like like, never uh, wear never wear t-shirts or anything pretty rarely i used to wear them more often yeah or i used to like i used to wear them for the show like if you go look watch old episodes of the show like i would like i would buy t-shirts just to wear them on the show like oh i'm doing a a video about the playstation i have to buy like a playstation t-shirt you know but (laughs) Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I just think like a polo shirt is pretty much as comfortable as a t-shirt, but then you got a shirt with a collar on it, so you know. Right. Anyway, I'm so sure what are your final thoughts on this on this issue? Riveting discussion. I mean, my thoughts on this issue is I'm really glad we moved this over to the side channel. <laughs> so uh, I just you know I was prepared Hi. for I was prepared for another date with Lady Disappointment, and I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't disappointed in that way, you know. <laughs> My expectations were met. Um, but like I said again, it's just like if it wasn't for the fact that I was doing live streams, like I don't mind getting these magazines because I don't have any of these, you know. And so like this is cool to add to the collection, you know. It's just like 
Yeah. From a live stream perspective, it's just like, ah, this wouldn't be ideal. And even though you told me not to, I had a uh, I had a magazine on Ready Five over here. To wait, sub. Wait, can we see what it was? Uh, yeah, but we're not going to look through it because I I no. bought this magazine to do a proper read through with. But I just figured like oh, okay. I figured, you know, but having it as the backup and doing it with you, like I figured this would be a cool magazine for us to look at together. So, in fact, when I do the read through of it, we can do it together if you like. But okay. it's the um, that's basically oh. the Super Nintendo launch issue. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a pretty classic issue of EGM. So. Uh, OK, like if, if we do do that one, I, I think I yeah. might have that one so I can. Yeah, I can have a copy of it here too yeah that's a good one yeah but that's i just i pulled that out and i'm like yeah that could be a pretty good uh oh yeah that you can't even see what's on the inside cover i'm not showing you guys nothing <laughs> um instead you got this <laughs> but again it's like, like i said okay. the thing is i just think for me because i have like a pretty big gap in gaming knowledge from stuff around this time. That's why I, mm -hmm. otherwise when I saw that, I'd be like, Ooh, neat. Like if it had been like a, a computer gaming world or PC gamer from this exact time, my attitude would be, would be totally different. Be like, Oh, I can talk about this stuff. Like, all I mean, I could, I could not talk about any of that stuff at all. And then it would have been. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think it's, it's, I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's there's there's no real expectations. I think for doing these streams, that's why. You, oh, people have expectations. Know, just, well, I mean, I think that. See, and not not are, you see knop tops in the chat there. See knop top. I noticed. did. He's, he's been he's gotta, been here for a while. I I have strict rules about um, collar popping. Like, because I'm wearing this and it zipped up all the way. Like, even if it wasn't all the way, pop the collar. Or if I put a jacket on, I pop the collar on both. But. If I'm just wearing the shirt with nothing over it, you don't pop the collar because that's that looks yeah. kind of douchey. Then I, then I fold the collar back down. Right. But see, because it's right. cold, this gives it it helps keep my neck warm. You pop the collar, zip this up all the way. I'm toasty. Uh, probably warmer than I am down here. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's 11 degrees outside, like how warm is it in your basement? I mean, like. My yeah, basement, not that bad. My I basement mean, has no heat at all, so um, thank yeah. goodness I don't live somewhere where it gets to be eleven degrees or I'd have a problem. Um, now it's down to nine degrees now. Oh. Wow, that's crazy. Sorry, it's like that's okay. A off there. A little off there. Yeah. It was off the screen. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what else we got going on. Uh, like I said, I already made... Um, I made the next mixtape. I. Mm -hmm. It's funny. The first mixtape, the one that I already uploaded, um, I literally just recorded the tracks individually onto a tape, you know? Right. Um, and then... But then afterwards, I, I thought about it. because I, So what I was doing, though, is I was just like, you know... For anybody who doesn't know how a tape deck works, I guess, like when you hit the record button, uh, it doesn't actually record. But what it does is it like it feeds the audio signal back through the circuitry and like back to your your receiver. So if you hit record, it's not recording. But then if you play the source, you can see the audio levels on the front of the uh the meter on the front of the tape deck and then you can adjust the uh audio level that it's going to record at and so like i was doing that so each each track i had to like hit record play it and then yeah record enable exactly um and then i'd have to adjust yeah, the audio like level the what isn't that the same thing as like hitting like well to actually record, you got to hit play and record at the same time, right? Well, no. If you just hit record, then you can do that. And then when you're ready to actually record, you hit play. And then it'll I start see. recording. Oh, okay. But what I'm saying is, so I did that individually for every single track. And so then after I recorded the video, because like with the video, it's literally like I point my camera at the tape deck. And then yeah. uh, I have the output from the receiver going into a recorder. 
and then I just you know I sync up the audio with the video afterwards. But mm-hmm. uh, but I would notice that some of the tracks were a little bit louder than others. Like they look the same on the audio meter, but then you hear them and you're like, yeah, that one sounds louder than that one, and like the same. Yeah. And then I realized that this is like a really stupid way to do this. And so what I did for, so the one that I've already, I've already made it and I made a tape, but it's not the tape I want to use for the video. Cause like I said, I want to get, I got some, I got some blank tapes coming in the mail that I'm pretty excited about, but, um, uh, what was my point? Oh, so, uh, but I went ahead and made the tape, uh, just to see how it is. But, but what I did this time is I downloaded all the tracks I wanted to use and then I loaded them into my, I just used Final Cut Pro. Because you can record right. just audio in Final Cut Pro. It doesn't care. Mm-hmm. But that way I lined up all the tracks. I was able to shuffle them around and put them in the order I wanted them in. And that way I knew, okay, I can only... Like, it's a 60-minute tape, so you can actually kind of get, like, 31 or 31 and a half minutes on a side. And so I did all that. But then I adjusted the levels of all the tracks so that they sound the same volume. And then I export that as one big WAV file. It's like it's like a, you know, 700-megabyte wave file. Right. And then I can just send all, I can record the entire, the entire side of the tape at once. And then I know it'll sound fine. Yeah. It's easy. One one big go. Yeah. It's it's less work. Yeah. So, so I did that. So somebody was asking what it's going to be. It's going to, it's the Super Nintendo in 1991. So it's like the first four or five months of Super Nintendo games. But it'd be interesting to see what you picked. Well, you know what's interesting is like if you if you were to check out the music of the other games from that year, like Super Mario World music doesn't really fit in with like any of it. Cuz like when I put the when I put the tracks in order, you I try to have like a flow to it, like you want to have it, you know, things should sound good next to other things, you know, like Yeah. If you're going to have a quiet sort of laid back track and then later you're going to have some kind of like high energy track, you don't you don't put them back to back. You got to build up to it a little bit or something. Yeah. yeah. And like there's nowhere to put Super Mario World music where it sounds good. Or not I don't mean good, but I mean where it doesn't but, sound awkward next to anything yeah. else. Even though the Super and Mario now, World soundtrack is awesome. It is, but I mean, it doesn't. It feels like it just everyone's heard it by now. Yeah, it wouldn't be as exciting. Yeah, I guess. And then, uh, so Jonathan is saying in the chat, um, the way the human ear perceives loudness is very frequency dependent, and mm-hmm. that's true. So, like, if I if I put all those tracks into Final Cut, and I make it so that every single one of them is like you know peaks at like minus six db so in theory they're all the same volume they don't sound the same volume like you have to go through each one with your ear and just be like okay right this one sounds louder than the last one so you have to drop it down a little more even though you shouldn't because like he's saying it's like some of them just have in that certain mid-level frequency range if it has more presence or whatever there it's going to sound louder so but yeah, anyway, I don't know. I'm just having fun making those. So I see that there was a, a 9.99. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. From, uh, um, yeah, from from zero beast. Zero beast. Saying, uh, Thank you. Thanks for the awesome stream, Chris and Corey. Can't wait for the next set of magazines you guys get. Yeah, well, we I mean we talked about this you know before, and I'm just going to reiterate. I think like next next time we're we're going to have the backup magazine because like I don't want to. I don't mind getting these like every once in a while, but it just it can't be every month unless there's something about it. If like if it had been the E three issue, that would have been maybe a little bit, you know. I think we should do because you were thinking about opening it beforehand. Yeah. But I, but I think that I think it'd be Ooh. fine to open it. Yeah. You should open it on stream because I think it's not even just like the read through. I think it's more fun. Like it's one of the most fun parts about it is like is taking it out and seeing what it is the first time. No, I agree, but it's just like I feel like when I take it out and it's kind of like, oh, then maybe that's if we took it out and it was something cool, then it would be. But yeah. cool, I mean that's I mean, that's subjective. What's cool to me and what's cool to somebody else are like right two different things. So, um, 
I mean, I don't, only thing we could do, because the thing is, if we're going to do like a backup, like this was sort of an exception, because this is kind of a heavy hitter magazine. But what I was thinking is if you, if I got like a magazine that was just kind of like, okay, like mm -hmm. if I got a game players magazine from like 89 that just had like, you know, some whatever game on the cover. So that it's not an obvious choice. And I say, okay, we can look at this game pro magazine, or we can look at this this old game players that seem like it kind of has like a snoozer of a game on the cover because then it's more of a like not obvious choice. Right. Yeah. Right. Or we can just keep looking at these, you know, I don't either way. Well, but we, we'll let, let the chats decide. Well, that's the thing I was saying is you, we could just, I, it's too bad. You can't have a poll in the chat, you know, cause then you could just put them both yeah. together and be like, all right, you guys have two minutes to, you know, decide Make the choice but, i mean you can just like read what people are saying probably get an idea yeah. that way yeah uh all right well i think that's about it right so yeah yeah it's 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 almost 1 a.m i so. know i know i i i have no i have no problem with this i think it's fun to nobody told me that the it's... camera is crooked <laughs> so you see how it's but well, maybe... it's butcher block so you have the seams you know like yeah. it's important to me that the seams need to like line up with the top and the bottom of the frame. But I was like, I was trying to get everything set up tonight and like, I didn't get it. I didn't get it done. So, um, so Mike McFly says, I'll probably make a mixtape and send it your way. Uh, that'd be, a, I'm totally into trading mixtapes. Like if anybody wants to like, you know, if you want to send me a mixtape and then you want me to make you a copy of one of my mixtapes or like, um, I'm already sending a copy of that Genesis mixtape to a couple of people, but um, I think that would be well, cool I to start Maybe a if whole. You're sending them out. Like I, I'm definitely interested. Yeah, I'm just I might wait because like a couple of people wanted one, but it's like if I'm gonna make another one, like it costs pretty much the same amount of money to send somebody two mixtapes as one mixtape. So yeah, um, but because I think it'd be cooler for it'd be cool for me too if people send me mixtapes. Like that'd be a cool thing to collect, you know, as other people's mixtapes. Yeah. So I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some. You better. You can make an REM mixtape. Oh pretty, man, that'd I, be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm sure I have plenty of those already. So. Yeah. I so guess now it looks weird because like like the on vintage the ones, I guess. Yeah. That'd be cool. Hey, somebody's sending me. Somebody's sending me a couple of metal tapes. Like type fours, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Wait. So I'm gonna have to save those for something, you know. You know, like there's different cassette types. Like there's type one, type two, oh, yeah, type yeah, four. Yeah. So type four are metal tapes. Really? Yeah. Like type one is is like ferric, like ferric oxide. Type two I is had like no idea. Type two is chromium chromium dioxide or an equivalent, and then type four are like. I think they're not metal oxides or something. I don't know, but does it does it affect the uh, the sound of them? It's supposed to like a metal tape is supposed to be like the primo like best quality tape. Really? So, yeah. I've ever seen a metal tape. So well, no, they just look like tape. I mean, the color's a little bit different. Like a regular type one tape is brown, and like if you get a chromium a chrome tape, it, it's like a lot darker, and so is a metal tape. But. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking I want to try to do like a theme. Like if I'm going to have metal tape, I was thinking like, you know, stuff like Lords of Thunder should go on a metal tape, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, Mario Mania says there was a type three. There was a type three, but it was, um, they're pretty rare. Like you don't hardly ever see type three. I think type three was like ferric oxide. And it was like a, like a ferric chromium hybrid or something. I don't remember. I might be like saying that wrong, but. Um, yeah. Um, oh, it says, Corey, have fun scaring your kid with gremlins and offering them a Winston or a camel. I feel like, I, f I mean, I don't, tell me that you didn't smoke Marlboro Lights. I, I did smoke Marlboro Lights. Yeah, exactly. And, and you never told me that I mean, before. I can just tell looking at you, you were a Marlboro Lights. Yeah, Light yeah. Smoke. I mean, my, my wife smoked, uh, camel lights. Really? I went through phases. I smoked a lot of different kinds. I would be like, oh, I'm going to, like, I smoked Marlboro Lights, Marlboro Mediums, Marlboro Reds, Camel Lights, Camel Regular. Oh, Camel Marlboro Reds, man. Like, after, after smoking, 
like lights for so long and you just, and you smoke like a red, it was like, yeah, it gave you a buzz. For the first <laughs> oh time. yeah, it did. Those are probably, I think, of all of like the major brand, like non-discount brand cigarettes. I think Marlboro Lights taste the worst. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Like Camel I regulars mean, were way better. Or Camel wides. Or I tried. I messed around. I smoked non-filtered Pall Malls for a while. Because if you smoke non-filtered cigarettes, nobody wanted to bum a cigarette off of you. It's like the, right. it's like the manual transmission of cigarettes. You know? Yeah. Like, hey, can I borrow your truck? I mean, you can, but it's a manual. Oh, I don't know how to drive a manual. You know? <laughs> hey, can I bum a smoke? Yeah, but I smoke non-filters. Oh, never mind. <laughs> That's how you get people. It's yeah. like not even for like because you enjoy them. It's just so that people will leave you alone. I mean, yeah. Uh, but, all right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I I think about it sometimes. Sometimes I'll have like a like a dream of of smoking a cigarette. Really? Yeah. And like, and I'll be like, what am I doing? And I know that I can't. I I just can't can't even like take a drag off a cigarette because I've I've go, I've gone for too long without smoking. So what do you? The idea, the idea of starting over. Yeah. I mean, I've been I've been quit smoking for like twelve years now. So I yeah. even if I just like have one, yeah, like the idea that I could it would have to start over and then you know it's like another twelve years to get to that point again. Oh, oh, I see. The the the, the streak the streak can oh, never I'm not, end. Is what I'm, I'm not worried say. about uh, the streak. Right. I'll I tell mean, you what was we, rough was I went to France like a year and a half ago or something and like. Like the stereotypes everybody, are true. Like there. everybody still smokes there, and I was like, "Oh man!" Like if ever yeah. there was a time for me to say, "Like yeah, I'm just gonna," you know, "I'm just gonna smoke for two weeks," but I didn't. <laughs> I heard that that I, um, the Greece is like that a lot too. A lot of people. Smoke oh, in Greece. Yeah, I have I haven't been to Greece, so I can't uh, I can't comment on that. But maybe or probably Italy. I'm sure they probably all still smoke. So, yeah. Anyway, um, anyways, yeah. So I think that'll that'll probably do it for tonight's stream. Um, I know I said this last time. I still want to get back to streaming video games. I just uh, since the last stream, like some people, nobody seems to have noticed it in the chat, which is totally fine. But uh, we're we're now streaming from the old location in the basement because I had to move my that's, desk. That's um, even more of a reason to start streaming games again. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is this is in the old spot. It's just now I'm now I'm sitting at a desk instead of sitting up at something high. But like you can see, like you know, back there is like my arcade cabinet and all that, all the stuff that was in the background. And then like over here, there's the Atari Age poster that uh, that Rory gave me. So like this, we're we're in the old spot. So, um, but I had to do that because uh, we got a bunch of water in the basement because we had a really really bad storm. So, um, and that. And then I didn't have power for like a whole week. And then I got, then I think I got sick or something. I don't really know, but, um, I get tested every week at work for coronavirus. So it wasn't that. So I don't know. It might've even just been allergies. I don't know. But anyway, uh, anyway, uh, yeah. thanks everybody who, who hung out, everybody who, uh, who donated. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, I hope that was entertaining and, um, yeah, and we'll see you guys again, uh, very soon on the next one. All right. Yes. Good night, everybody. All right. We should.